right, I believe we are live. Welcome one and all, hands to the sky. Um, if you are watching us, we are the Boston Public Library Teen Services Twitch stream. Uh, welcome to uh, what I have dubbed Scarlet Follow. And the people that we are following uh, today are the co-creators. Well, my name is Chris Jacobs. I'm the Teen Tech Coordinator over at Boston Public Library. We have several teen librarians uh, in the chat. Um, we'll explain to you um, sort of what we're doing here and what this amazing looking game is before us. Uh, but first, I will uh, say thank you uh, prematurely and also uh, welcome our two wonderful creators, Tony Howard Arias and Abby Howard. If you guys want to introduce yourselves real quick and let them know about Scarlet Hollow, not follow, but hollow, that'd be great. So my name is Abby Howard. I am an independent cartoonist. I have seven graphic novels under my belt. I love horror, I write horror, and I am a co-creator of Scarlet Hollow the Game. I do all of the art and half the writing. God. And I, I'm Tony Howard, uh, Howard Arias. That's my last name. <laughs> I am Abby's spouse. Uh, I'm also half the writing team on Scarlet Hollow. I'm the game developer. And before I started working on indie games, I worked for a bunch of different startups. Uh, I built volunteer organizing tools for uh, progressive political campaigns and nonprofits. And I also worked at the Boston Globe for STAT, their life science publication. Um, that's, that's everything there is to know about. <laughs> Well, and Abby were and I were discussing whether it was appropriate to share this, but you were just doing a very important role in your household. Something happened, there yes. was an emergency, we had to start two minutes late. Do you want to share with the folks at home <laughs> what, what cat happened? Likes to pee on the floor. <laughs> All the time she does this Every to us. Day. And just so everybody knows, the, the cat is actually on our stream display right now, correct? Right in between you guys? Yeah. Her name is Spoons. Yeah, we have three pets. Spoons. Yeah. Up the axolotl and Wednesday the ball python. Oh my god. Love all it's three of those angry. pets and I really hope maybe maybe none of them will make an appearance, but I'm just saying if that were to happen, nobody in our stream uh would be uh would, would object to any of it. Um, we have a lot of animal lovers in the stream. Um, so just to kind of like ground everybody, um, we're gonna be playing through the entirety of the currently free to play episode one of Scarlet Hollow uh, that I believe is free to download on Steam at this very moment for anybody who is interested in experiencing it. Um, the other thing that I'll sort of uh, sort of announce um, is that uh, during certain key moments, so this is, um, and I guess this is sort of our first question, uh, but you you describe this on the Steam page as sort of a horror visual novel, um, and as such, for those of you like for those uh, among our teens who may have never played a visual novel before, do you guys like have a description of the game, like, or do you want to explain what a visual novel is? It's like a book that you can click. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Except it's also got a lot of interactivity. So it's kind of like a choose your own adventure book. That yeah. You can click. But I feel like that doesn't necessarily apply to visual novels across the board. Mm -hmm. A lot of them, because there's kind of two main distinctions in the genre. There's, um, there's one bucket, which are often called light novels, which is just a combination of kind of words like you would read in a normal book and the audio and visual components. So you'll have original art, you'll have music and other things that I guess enhance the reading experience, but that have very little interactivity. And then there's another bucket that has a lot more interactivity in it. And that's the bucket we fall into where anytime your character says something, you pick what they say. Um, I guess a good way to describe it is if you've played like um, any decision-heavy RPGs, like um, Mass Effect, yeah, Mass Effect, Effect, early things in the Fallout series. So anything from the beginning through like New Vegas, um, it would be like all of the conversations in those games, <laughs> but without the shooting. The shooting. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, some people go for the conversations. It's not all about shooting in those games. That's a big yeah. feature. Um, so yeah, in so today's... I make, I make Tony do all the shooting. Do you... Anyway, sorry. <laughs> no, that's good. <laughs> um, I also have a partner that I make do all the shooting um, because <laughs> I'm, I'm more of a convo uh, type. But I will say that one of the things that we're going to do today, we're going to play through the episode, and I think we're going to give the teens who are watching from stream chat uh, from or the stream at home the opportunity to help uh, impact some of the decision-making. 
um, while, of course, Tony and Abby uh, sort of uh, voice act the entire experience, which again, we are so excited for that. Um, that said, we also want teens at home to know if you have any questions uh, for these game developers, artists, illustrators, like so many roles that you guys play um, with regards to this game, shoot them in the chat. We have uh, moderators in the chat who are literally waiting to lift your questions into a document where I can, at certain key moments, kind of like not interrupt the gameplay, but like slide into the like gameplay and essentially um, ask them. So if there's anything that you wanted to know about game development, art, design, the game of Scarlet Hollow, um, I mean, I won't say nothing's off limits because I've made that makes that mistake before stream. I'm not <laughs> gonna make that again. However, um, you know, anything that you'd like to ask um, these uh, individuals, I mean, you're gonna quickly see how talented they are, but uh, at the same time, the whole point of this stream is to kind of open up uh, the realm of creation and just understand how creators, especially versatile creators, create something new. Because I, I think this is both of your first ever game, right? Yeah. Yep. So what an amazing. Well, I'll, I'll let you guys kind of kind of go from here. I'm like, I'm like, you guys, this is amazing. But like, let's let's have the people at home see it for themselves. Um, sure. You guys can get it started. <laughs> All right. All right. Yay! Thank you so much for that intro yeah of Ooh, i can see i'm gonna try not to fawn but i make no promises <laughs> all right okay what's our name uh, uh, uh oh <laughs> do you want the stream to try to name us <laughs> Crim, crim no, yeah it's do, <laughs> yeah does do y'all have, have suggestions? any requests uh chat truck are you crap barthemew <laughs> barthemew Barthemio. I like Barthemio. Hortensia. Barthemio or Hortensia. Oh, geez. This is, uh, this is like the upper limit, I think, of how long a name can be. Amazing. So All I'm right, not yeah. seeing the actual game come through. I'm wondering. Oh, no. Oh, did it freeze? Yeah, it looks like it froze. Um, Maybe undo the... The screen share? The screen share and redo it. Oh, it's back. Oh, we got it. <laughs> we got it. it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I'm already 10 times as invested in this game because our name is Barthemio Martensia. All right. All right. Here's hoping that doesn't happen We get it in the city of... We live in Boston. Boston, baby. Boston, baby. Uh-oh, I think it happened again. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. That's no good. All right, this is... There is um, something going on. Okay. We're on the right internet, right? We're always on the right internet. Yeah, I definitely the right saw the internet. mouse move that time. Okay, I'm seeing the mouse move. Okay, but that was after we tapped out, which I don't, all right, all right let, let's keep going yeah, for a little bit and see what happens. For sure. Maybe when we get to the game proper. Hold on, I'm, I'm just watching the screen from yeah. our end. So sorry about that. Is it frozen it again? Just fine before. It depends, are you still in the, if you're still in the city, then I can I can see the city. Yeah, but I'm moving the mouse a bunch. And it's yeah, I'm not seeing it move. For video? Okay. Maybe uh, it has to do with me being on there. Oh no. Sorry. I'm... It's okay. What if we try Yeah, live TV. Where yep. Um window it and then sorry, just one second. No, take your time. Share screen. We did plan the stream guys today to go till six PM. So we are good to go. All right, so I'm seeing preferences right now. Oh, and now I, it's I think I forgot to. Okay, Pop that is sharing computers now. Okay. Now you should. Okay, great. Is this good? Okay. I can definitely see it. Uh, now you've got a little bit of white bar at the yeah. top. Yeah, oh, don't worry, I'm right on it. All right. All right, great. yay. We shall not tolerate this white bar. Okay, perfect. Much more responsive, folks are saying. All right. Yes. Do we wait for you? Keep going. All right. No, you can keep right going. All right. Um, they? Yeah, they, them. Yeah. They, them for the win. Yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, one of the things we built out is uh, when you make your character, you get to pick two of these traits. Um, they work kind of similarly to, I guess, perks in some other RPGs, um, or the 
um, special system in the Fallout games where different traits unlock different dialogue options and thus different ways to resolve situations and quests. Uh, kind of going through the list we've got. Um, God, of course, the immediate. We already we have two. <laughs> Uh, uh, I strong, told you! <laughs> Pinnacle of Fitness, Enchantment of Root Beer in 3 seconds. Mystical is strange and unusual. You see the threads of reality in a way others cannot. Talk to animals. You, you can, can talk, talk to, to animals. Animals. <laughs> animals can talk to you. A gift and a curse. Treat smart. Smells BS. Also good at BS. No door can hold you. Keen eye. Observant. Picks up on vibes. Understands others' perspectives. Uh, book smart, uh, you know a lot of fun facts. Research is your favorite activity. Straight A student. And then hot, attractive, charming. People either want to be you or be with you. Gang, everyone wants talk to animals. I mean, talk to animals is a clear winner, but this is one of those opportunities, guys. If you would like to vote in the stream for the second trait, or frankly, even for the first one, let us know. <laughs> what do you think, Abby? See, we were leaning towards doing a hot keen eye playthrough. And then leaving talk to animals for people to... To do on their own, perhaps. Oh, they're so desperate they for want it. it so... <laughs> uh, yeah, Booksmart is very librarian. We could do Booksmart talk to animals. That seems very appropriate. I'm leaning it's towards tough. our earlier thing. Yeah, I've just... This is the carrot on the stick for people to <laughs> uh, smash that like button and subscribe <laughs> after the stream. <laughs> but hey... <laughs> It's pretty fun. Oh, Lots right. of replayability. Hot Kunai is the one Hot I always Kunai. go with, so I'm very excited about this. So wait, we, what did we go with? We went with... Hot Kunai. Hot and Kunai. Hot, ooh, okay. That's my favorite one. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you jolt awake as the bus hits a particularly nasty bump. You feel like you'd only just managed to start drifting off, and now here you are, awake again, and still exhausted. For a moment, you're hazy on the details of where exactly here is, confusing this bus with the many others that came before it. But as your mind continues to reassert its existence in the waking world, the past few days come back into focus. The long-lost cousin, the bad news, the 26 hours of bus rides with countless late-night stops and CD depots that felt unsafe even in the middle of the day. You wouldn't normally find yourself traveling like this, but your cousin bought the tickets. The funeral of her mother, your aunt, seemed like something you shouldn't ignore, even considering your own late mother's rocky relationship with this side of the family. Fortunately, the end of your long journey is in sight. You're almost in Scarlet Hollow. Anyway, as I was saying... Oh no, he's still here. He's been sitting next to you for the past five hours, talking at you without pause. You're not sure he even stopped when you started to doze off. At first you thought he was just being friendly, but that was several hours of one-sided conversation ago. I was up in Maryland looking for work, but mostly messing around because I was a dumb teen. <laughs> Me and my buddies were doing our usual prank stuff. You know, pushing joggers into the harbor, that sort of thing. Alright. So we're going to make most of these decisions, since there's so many. <laughs> but... That's funny. Yeah, I, I was kind of leaning towards <laughs> less chat stops us doing like the uh, pure chaos gremlin, but it's up to you. <laughs> they'll let you go, they'll let you run chaos gremlin if you if you let down. <laughs> All right, chat says, "What is wrong with you?" All right, sounds about right. Dude, what's wrong with you? Pushing joggers into the harbor? That's awful. What if they drowned? <laughs> yeah, I was such a shithead back then. I'm still a bit of a shithead, but hey, nobody's perfect. Poor boy. The worst. So this girl comes up to us, swinging her purse, yelling about how she was going to call the cops or whatever. It was hilarious. She actually hit my friend and he said it hurt a lot, so I guess she really was mad and not just playing. So she kept swinging and soon enough she lost her balance and fell into the harbor all on her own. We didn't even have to push her. We had a good laugh and fished her out. Her phone got soaked so she couldn't call the cops on us. We wound up hanging out all day. She kind of became my girlfriend after that, and we've been on and off for about a year, so it's pretty serious. What a great meet you. <laughs> so about five months ago, she tried to break up with me, like, for real. And geez, you ever get so mad that you just want to, like, kill somebody? What do you think, folks? <laughs> <laughs> There's, seriously, what the hell's wrong with you? 
Smile. I would smile and pretend he didn't say that. Actually, I would know exactly what I did because we met this person. Oh, this is we want I, verbatim. Chat wants to threaten something. <laughs> oh, all right. I kind of feel like killing someone right now. I don't like horrible people waking me up to tell me about their horrible thoughts. What can I say? I'm an interesting guy. <laughs> Anyways, you'll get it when someone tries to break your heart someday. It changes a person. Makes them think things they never thought they could. I honestly could have killed that woman. <laughs> anyway, she's giving birth to her son right now, so I'm trying to get up to Virginia to be there for it. But I don't know if I'm, like, into that stuff, so I might just wind up on a bus to New York or something instead. Always wanted to go there. Alright, we've got a keen eye. It's nice to take trade options sometimes, it's kind of... <laughs> Uh, no, chat, OMG, wait, this was a real person you met? Yes. Yeah, in, in New York. Yeah. You're kidding. We, were, we, we got, <laughs> we were, like, taking a Greyhound back up to Boston, got there a couple hours early, and he just would not stop talking at us. I have a good comic about it. Well, I, I, I can pull it up. Oh, my God, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it was horrible. Okay, I think oh, a Rainbow Girl says, too, seriously, what the hell is wrong? I mean, um, that's fair. We did threaten him. <laughs> yeah. Your girlfriend is giving birth right now, and you're thinking about ditching her to go have fun in New York after she tried to break up with you and you threatened to kill her? Hey now, I never threatened to kill her. Okay, maybe over text just a little, but fatherhood's scary. Unless her mom's there. Yep. Got to be on the link. Oh. It's not a, just anybody can post the link. Which Dang, makes a lot of I, I successfully posted that link in chat. Anyway. Done. Um. Plus her mom's there, so it's not like she's alone. Her mom doesn't like me much, so I'd probably just make things super stressful. She'll understand. She's chill. Anyways, where'd you say you were headed? God, I didn't. Scarlet Hollow. Just a small town. You probably haven't heard of it. Or just don't answer. Her mom doesn't like him? I wonder why. <laughs> With a face like this? I also feel like, in a weird way, I should take off this hat right now because I feel like I'm giving echo to this guy. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! I'm so sorry. I, okay. I did not Where's purposefully mean to dress like bus man. It's a common look. I'll do one. I didn't. Oh, right. <laughs> no need to be clear. See, I was just asking. Not like I'm gonna follow you off the bus or anything. So, if you aren't getting off at my stop, then you must be headed to Scarlet Hollow, right? Or, the holler, as they call it in this part. That's the only other stop until this bus turns around. I ride it pretty often, so I know. Almost nobody ever goes up that way, so come to think of it. And a couple of buddies who went up there to work in the mine. There's a coal mine up in the holler, you see. There's always a job listing or two with the boards around. I never wanted to do that kind of thing myself. I like my lungs just the way they are, thanks. My buddy's got desperate enough to try it. I haven't heard from them in a while, now that I think about it. I should see if they're on Facebook and see how they're doing up there. Hope they didn't die. <laughs> he looks back at his phone, for one's focused on something other than you. Oh, this is me. It was lovely meeting you. Hope you don't get too bored without me around to talk to. Here, I have something for you. Stranger rifles through his pack before presenting you with a dripping bag of peanuts. Oh my god. They're boiled peanuts. I got them at a gas station a few buses back. I noticed you haven't eaten much, so I figured you could use them more than me. Boiled peanuts are a thing, by the way, for people who haven't been to the South. It's a food you eat, and it does taste good, but not when it's from a stranger's, you know, open bag bowl. Oh, Rainbow, thanks for complimenting our voice acting. I will agree with Rainbow Girl. I think you guys are doing an amazing job. <laughs> it's like dripped all over my bag, so I don't want to carry them anymore. All right, we got nice. I love boiled peanuts. Take the peanuts. No thanks. Screw you and screw your peanut <laughs> or eat the peanuts. God, I, I kind of want to override chat here. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. We're taking the peanuts. Yeah, taking now the do we want to be like, nice. Yeah, I want to be like, yeah, sure. You take Nice! I love boiled peanuts. Glad they're going to a good home. <laughs> and with that, I leave you. Safe travels, friend. <laughs>
Can I interrupt you guys for a quick second? Yeah. Oh my god. So first of all, um, bravo voice acting. I absolutely agree. Thank you. But second of all, I'm interested to know, like, I mean, obviously, now that we know that there's, like, an actual experience to back this up, I'm interested to know, like, why you kicked off the game with him. You know what I mean? Like, beyond anything else. Not to say that he doesn't maybe make an appearance. I'm not trying to give spoilers, you know, or anything. But I just, like, it was such, I mean, like, I'm a huge horror fan. And Abby, it seems like you are as well. Like, and I, I can think of a couple of reasons why you might have started with him. But, like, I just wanted to know from you guys. Um, is there a specific reason that you guys, like, started here? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so originally the script, I was having a lot of trouble coming up with something for the opening scene. I basically just had, like, a normal harbinger situation where you stop at a gas station and there's an old man there like, ah, oh, go up to the holler, I see. Not a lot of people go up that a ways, and it sucked. It was terrible. I've never seen a bus go up there, not in the past 20 years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So then we decided, we were just like, okay, well, let's mine our life experience, yeah. which tends to be when I get stuck on things. It wasn't a fun first one. No. As to, I guess, kind of to build on your question, Chris, too, um, we wanted to make a conscious design decision where the first conversation you have is, ex is a little, is like thematically tied to, but extraneous to the game itself. Gotcha. So you have the opportunity to see how the mechanics work kind of as a tutorial and to get in the headspace of acting as your character instead of just immediately meeting someone plot relevant and being like, okay, what are the right things to say to get the optimal outcome here? Right. Like this person, you're just like, I can be mean to this person if I want to. I can really show my true colors because he's horrible and buried his soul to me for some reason. And you kind of know that you're not going to speak again. Yeah. Um, and kind of once you cross that threshold and like kind of stand your ground or mean to someone once, like, you're going to be more comfortable doing that moving forward. Plus, um, it's unsettling. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Something something that we very much just want to avoid with this game is something that you see in a lot of RPGs where, you know, anytime you're doing a quest, you wind up having a Wikipedia article <laughs> uh, or, like, a wiki page open in another tab, and then you go there, and it's like, okay, what's the correct thing to pick here if I have these party members so I get, like, the best outcome? Yeah. We're trying to make a game where you are playing a character, and you're not looking for an optimal solution. You're just existing. Well, it's interesting because it, it harkens back to, because you guys said that you're huge Mass Effect fans. Sorry, I'm closing my window. Um, and in that game in particular, like, there's the Paragon outcome, and then there's the, what's the opposite one? I the Renegade one? The Renegade outcome. And you're very much pulled in the, like, I'll do an all-Paragon playthrough or an all-Renegade playthrough. And I felt like this conversation, like, was very much, like, pulling you in that, like, it doesn't really, like, there's no clear Paragon or clear, clear Renegade with this interaction. So I can totally see how that um, kind of puts you in this space where, like, a fully developed human, you know what I mean? Like, and have reasonable right. responses to things as opposed to being like the virtuous white knight or, you yep. know, the evil chaos, you know, imp kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and and something that you see a lot in like Paragon and Renegade style versions too is this like weird setup where the Renegade option or the immoral option, whatever you want to call it, is like kind of set up to be this pragmatist that's willing to make sacrifices to accomplish a goal, but then you're kind of jarringly removed from that space because, you know, being the ultimate goody two-shoes character accomplishes the same, if not. Um, which, I don't know, it just like, it removes, it's always kind of removed those stakes for me as a player. Alright, Yeah, click that button. And just like that, the stranger is gone. Maybe you can finally get some sleep. Next stop. Oh, let's see. Next stop, Erlet Hollow and the lot. That's my bus driver voice. It's almost there. All right. Uh, so the, the moving forward, do you want to keep keep with our arrangement of your player narrator, and I guess I'm everyone else, or do you want to swap that? There's a lot of girl voices. Yeah, there's a lot of girl voices. Yeah. Okay. So you yeah. want to be... All right, yeah, I'll be player and narrator. Thank and, you for... Uh, if you, you, 
Sorry, what? guys. I'm just going to interrupt and, and, and remind everybody on the stream right now. So first of all, uh, we are the Boston Public Library Teen Services Twitch stream. If you are a teen, teen librarian, somebody who's interested in horror games and gaming, you're in the right spot. We are joined today by the co-creators of Scarlet Hollow, Abby Howard and Tony Howard Arias. I'm going to give you guys a little bit of applause. You won't be able to hear it, but like, there's some applause. Um, and um, the... You know, the purpose of today's stream is, of course, to play through their game, Scarlet Hollow, episode one, which is free on Steam, but also for you guys to ask your questions of them, either creative questions, story questions, um, you know, game design questions. They can be anything um, that these two could answer. So if you have questions, we're going to be um, filtering those up. I've got a Google Doc right here, um, which will show me them and our mods will get those uh, to us. So we're going to stop intermittently like we just did for some questions. Uh, so lay them on in the chat. It might not get answered immediately, but it will eventually. Sorry, back to you guys. <laughs> no worries. No worries. Um, the bus finally comes to a stop. It's brakes squealing as it deposits you in front of the Scarlet Hollow bus station. Well, the sign reads bus station. Calling it that feels disingenuous. At best, it's a kiosk. Though for a small town like this, you're amazed there's so much as a road, let alone a bus that drives on it every week. Driver quickly shuts the doors behind you and starts the engine, kicking up dust clouds as he pulls away, eager to leave you and this place behind. Pony bro, we used Renpy, spelled R-E-N apostrophe P-Y. Yeah. Oh, good question. Yeah. Do you want to be hey, Bartholomew Hortensia. <laughs> Don't you mean Bartholomew? Bartholomew <laughs> Hortensia. <laughs> You instantly recognize the worn young woman from the few public photos on her Facebook page. She's your cousin, Tabitha, and she looks annoyed to be here. That's be hot, hot to our cousin, hot maybe. <laughs> All right. All right, I'm I think we, Yeah, let's do it. Your smile's always had a special effect on people, even blood relatives. You flash a grin and give your condolences. Tabitha, it's so nice to finally meet you. I was sorry to hear about your mom. I... thanks. For a brief moment, Tabitha is put at ease before she quickly straightens up and the annoyance returns to her face. It might not have been much, but you can confidently notch up another victory courtesy of the winning Barthy Mew Hortensia smile. <laughs> Come on, let's go. I don't want to spend any more time down here than I have to. Your cousin turns and motions to an old BMW parked near the bus kiosk. You follow her, clambering into the dusty relic. We've got another question of how long it took to make. Uh, this episode, about six months of full-time development from two people for, from start to finish. Plus a lot of scattered time beforehand with me learning the engine and us like hammering out plot points. Yep. Wow. It's a it doesn't take much driving before the only signs of civilization are the car you're in and the road you're on. Tabitha maintains an icy silence as she focuses on the road. Yeah. Dialogue options labeled explore can usually be taken without advancing the story. They can impact relationships and unlock additional story paths, so choose carefully. We got, how are you holding up? I guess we're both members of the Dead Moms Club now, huh? So the funeral, have we ever actually met or remain silent? Do it. Quickly. Oh yeah, we can just go through them. How are you holding up? <laughs> Fine. Phew, good to hear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rainbow Girl says, two. Two. You know you can talk to me, right? I know we only just met, but you know, I went through something similar with my own mom. So if you ever need to vent, sir. I'm good. Have the stairs straight ahead. Her expression tense and icy. Dead boss up, dead boss up. All right. Oh, oh no. The computer died. Oh no, that's okay. Oh, no. Well, we're still live, um, so no worries. We actually still have uh, we still have Tabitha on camera, and that uh -oh. that's good. That icy. <laughs> why? Why does this computer do this sometimes? Oh, <laughs> Listen, okay. it's it's better your computer than ours, so don't even worry about it. Um, we. Yeah. We'll take a pause um, real quick. And mm -hmm. I, I have to note, I don't know why, 
But like Tabitha for me channels, and I forget the character's name, and this is not an insult, but channels mm-hmm. the character from Rocky Horror Picture Show with the stringy blonde hair. Do you guys know who I'm talking oh! about? Yes, uh, Riff Raff. Yes, Riff Raff. I don't know why, but every <laughs> time I see Tabitha, I'm just like, I imagine the hair being like wet and sweaty and stringy and stuff like that. I absolutely, I think I had Riff Raff kind of in mind while deciding that. <laughs> That very That's very awesome. gross hair. <laughs> and while we're here waiting and seeing my mm-hmm. wonderful name um, on screen, um, the question that I I know I was asking myself as I went through this game preparation for a stream is like, what do these dialogue trees look like? I, I guess that this one like kind of cycles back. You know what I mm-hmm. mean? Like in mm-hmm. in like you're allowed to ask some of the things you didn't ask mm-hmm. before, but like in terms of like mapping that out, do you, does RenP is that how you pronounce it? The program that Ren you guys RenPy. Does that kind of have a built-in dialogue tree for you to build, or do you have to map it like in an Excel file? Because I'm like building it in that my was, head. That was something that I had to kind of custom build for RenPy. Uh, they have the ability to pick choices. Um, but for starters, I, we had to do a custom built UI that would show the previous line of dialogue in a conversation. Um, and the whole like kind of looping back with these explore options was something that we had to kind of separately build on our own. And as for actually writing them, we start out with the script in, uh, now we use Celtics, uh, C-E-L-T-X. But before we use Twine, it's very similar, except one has like multiple users on, on it at once. So okay. anyway, but we just kind of use that to put the script together. And that usually kind of winds up looking just like a big list of you do this, you do this, and not even necessarily new windows or anything. So, okay. so it's a yeah. little less like frenzied than I'm imagining it. Like in terms of like, <laughs> just like you guys with like a wall full of sticky notes with strings attached and like little red <laughs> fish pins where it's like, but Not no, like if they say this, then. It does look like that on Twine though. It does. Or Celtic wow. as we use now. <laughs> uh, do you want to switch computers? Do you think? The, the only issue is save loss, but we yeah. can quickly click through it. Yeah, our save Oh yeah, uh, we can. As, we long as, we, as long as we keep naming this character Barthemio. Oh, Hortensia. Yes. Hortensia. I feel like yeah. the legacy of this character needs to live on. Um, and just to kind of announce to everybody um, who might be picking up the stream at home, we're the Boston Public Library Teen Services Twitch stream. Uh, joined today, having a few technical difficulties, but nothing that's going to force me to... Don't worry about it. Um, it's happened to us before, and then, like, that's the that's the bigger issue, because then everyone's like, well, guess the stream is over for today, and then they go on their merry ways. Um, yeah. But we're joined All today. All too familiar. <laughs> right? <laughs> Oh, that's right. I should mention you guys have your own Twitch channel. Is that right? Yeah. Do you yeah. want to do you want to p- give it a shameless plug? Yeah, black underscore tabby underscore games. You can actually see our Twitch account in the chat right now. <laughs> awesome. Um, sorry, I'm just quickly yep. going through. Do and... your thing. Yeah. Do your thing. We uh, once a week now because we had to retire one of the streams. And actually, I think we might have to go on hiatus while we work on stuff that's too spoilery. I was going to so, say, I was, yeah. we were coming up with some questions for today, just as a backup. And just as a reminder to our stream audience, if you have any questions at all for Abby or Tony or both of them or Black Tabby Games as a unit, obviously, like, we see their socials here um, all over the map. Um, but uh, you can also ask today and more than likely they'll get answers for you today live in person. Um, but also... Um, just thinking about uh, the future, I was sort of noticing, I was looking at some forums that were saying that you had like a May 2021 uh, pl- release plan, I think, for episode two. Is that still the case? Or Yes. Yep. Awesome. We are still working hard to reach that deadline. So that Tight, should be... But we're going to get it done. Yeah, that's, that's episode awesome. two. And that episode is two, two out of seven. Oh, there are seven? Oh, I thought there were five. I'm so much more excited now. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) That's like... No, I'm glad. That's 40% more excitement as far as I'm concerned. Good. (laughs) Um, That's really cool. And do you... This was actually a question that um, I believe Laura had, and I'm sure somebody in the chat will ask this eventually, but while we're in setup mode, I'll just ask, like, is it like... So I think Lost had seven seasons as well, but, like, we all know that, like... Lost didn't have a plan for itself. This is a show from like the early 2000s that I'm referencing. So I'm, a, I'm an old man right now. But uh, at the same time, like 
there we all know that those shows like don't have a plan in advance and don't have like a story arc. Do you guys have like the main story beats drawn out somewhere? Every or? single major beat really? really resolved oh, yeah. before we started work on episode yeah. one. Wow. That's how I like to be I like to know exactly where I'm going so I can like drop hints, make sure that the narrative is structured around it. That's just how I work. Oh my god. Yeah, so I, oh go ahead. Oh, just I'm like personally offended as a writer by the um the the the, the lost version of <laughs> doing things i'm glad that that resonates with you because i feel the same way but at the same time like i was like i think they have to be planning because like there's even I, that now like will have me fishing for foreshadowing that's happening in episode one yeah that's going to have repercussions like down the line you know what i mean which is just amazing because there is and I'm not going to spoil anything, but there is a little bit of foreshadowing um, in this episode to something that happens in this episode, which I found only on my second playthrough. Uh, what was our last name? Hortensia. 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 There you go. <laughs> you got it. Our Hortensia. We live in the city of... Fast and baby. Fast and baby. Fast and baby. <laughs> they them for the win. Uh, yeah. Uh, by the way, are you seeing the broadcast right yeah, now? Is, is it, it working? Is yep, it the, working? I would have told you. Um, it is beautiful. <laughs> it is sublime. Okay, okay I'm, just, I'm just clicking yeah, through real quick. So here. where... Uh, yep. I'll, I'll do a quick summary, if you don't mind, of what has happened in the game so far. So we met Great. a creepy dude who maybe looks a little bit like me right now um, on the bus. Yes. Uh, I know. Uh, we... Are we, we? Do we take his boiled peanuts? Do we have the boiled peanuts? We're, we're, we're about to retake the boiled peanuts. Oh, okay, we have the boiled peanuts. <laughs> Very um, important. And then we met our cousin Tabitha outside. Uh, she met us here at the bus station. We're here for her mother's funeral. And we're driving, I believe, back to their house, their home. This computer doesn't shut off. It's the good computer. Yeah. Ooh. I'm so sorry. Awesome. Yeah, we're, we're, we're sitting on a replace the desktop donation goal on our stream <laughs> right now. It's like one in three or four streams. It, uh, it craps out? Yeah, it craps out on us, and it is a disaster. Uh, yeah, Jesus. Oops. Yeah, there we go. Okay. All yeah, right. so we we're should be all word. caught up. Thank awesome. Thank you so much for your patience. Oh my god, you guys so wait, are fine. Is this frozen on your end, Abby? Yeah, it's frozen on my end. It's better. Oh, it's do you want to refresh okay. it just so, just for my sanity, so I can see what's going on? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Slash, ooh, I could put yeah, it up, it up here. Oh, and then, then we, we have both the chat, chat <laughs> while keeping our eyes in the webcam. That's oh, perfect. you guys are fancy now. All right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Tons of Slash. <laughs> Everyone is voting for this Dead Moms Club to happen. Good. Why are oh, you trying to make Dead Moms Club oh, happen? <laughs> right, because we don't have working Wi-Fi right now. That's why we switch computers. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, all right, we have chat now. Yeah, great. They all want the Dead Moms Club. <laughs> Tornado Fisk, I have a soft spot for the early hussy strategy of just throwing out a million red herrings. Oof. Love yeah, it. Yeah, it worked for him, I guess. Interesting. I guess we're both members of the Dead Moms Club now, huh? I'm really leaning into the part where hot. I'm hot, yeah. <laughs> this is your cousin. <laughs> Whatever. Oh, Tony, should I ask, should I advise you to save? Or did you already? It auto saves. Oh, it does. The, the, oh, only, the only issue is uh, switching from one computer to another. Oh, uh, okay. Anyway. Aren't you the... No, oh, there, right. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Your cousin turns to stare at you, and I see hatred in her eyes. Maybe this would have worked to ease attention if she were someone else, but she isn't. She turns back to the road, her expression cold and unforgiving. I'm just going to go through all of these options. Great. So the funeral, it's on Sunday, right? This is your cousin. Oh, you and your sexy voice. Uh... <laughs> Yep, and like I told you. What's chat one here? Oh my god. <laughs> Which one? Oh, I was just I was just laughing and saying open casket embalming reception. <laughs> Normal stuff to Open casket embalming reception. Have you worked out all the details yet? Yep, taken care of. Don't need any help. Tabitha stick there straight ahead, her expression tense and icy. 
Have you ever actually met? Have you ever actually met before? I'm pretty sure this is the first time, right? Yep, you have your mom to thank for that. Or had, I guess. We've got, haha, uh, yeah, yeah DevOps Club. Club, or I wish I'd known about you, or is there bad blood between us, or that was unnecessary, which it was. Three. Okay. I don't know why my mom left, what kind of grudge she had against this side of the family, but I'm sorry. I wish I'd known about Whatever. What's done is done. Top of the stairs straight ahead, her expression tense and icy. Jeez, I guess we ran out of things to say. Alas! You decide to sit in silence with your cousin as the car eases off the steep mountain road. And here it is, the Scarlet Estate. Though it's seen better days, its crumpling elegance is not lost on you, someone used to cramped apartments in gray cities. Your mother told you about this place many times before she passed, always with an anger burning beneath her words. The faded majesty you once imagined doesn't quite compare with what's in front of you, a jarring blend of opulence and ruin. As you stare at it perched on the crumbling cliffside, you can't help but feel like it's something that should have been left to rot a long, long time ago. Can I ask a really quick question? Do Abby, it. Abby, you hand drew all of these environments. I did, yes. I, it, like, first of all, incredible. I'm going to give you applause that you can't hear, but everyone's hearing it. Um, yeah. Also, I have to ask, like, how long is the process of doing that? And do you do it, like, do you draft it on, like, a drafting table, like, hand draw it and then upload it? Like, what's what's that about? Like, and how long yeah, does that it's take? A, it's all hand drawn. I have a drafting table out, like, out of screen, but. Uh... Gosh, golly, follow our channel and check out our streams yes. every Saturday morning at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time and watch Happy <laughs> Do It Live. Yeah, some of them are easy. It can take, like, maybe four hours or something, but some of them can take up to, like, 12 or more. Uh, I mean, the background like this, this one took several days of work. Uh, the A lot of the house backgrounds were some of the more intense that I did. So I first do all of the line art. I love cross hatching with traditional pens. So I tend to do that. And then I scan it all in and add the sepia tones. Amazing. I mean, I'm, I'm sure I don't speak just for myself when I say that this is utterly amazing. It's like certainly one of the major, I mean, I we know, uh, for those of you who weren't here earlier, uh, Abby, you are an accomplished cartoonist and graphic novelist um, with some awards under your belt. Um, so this is not a new world for you, but certainly like mad props. This is like such a draw. And I'm also, well, I I'll let you guys keep going because I know we're a little behind, but there's so <laughs> many questions. And again, audience, throw your questions in the chat and we'll get them answered for you. Everything in this room has been here for much longer than you've been alive, each object cemented in place with layers of dust and cobweb. You can hear doors creak on their hinges and the aches and moans of ancient floorboards. The house itself sways in the wind. Welcome to our family's humble estate. Also, Tornado Bisques asks, uh, was lighting digital too, or is that like in line art? Because that's like brain melting. It's a combo, but the stuff that's over the line art that makes it a little bit uh, more transparent, that is digital. But all of the shading, like the cross hatching, is uh, a bunch of tiny, meticulous lines that Abby draws by hand without a ruler. That's me. Without a ruler. Without, without a ruler. ruler. I freehand this stuff. Watch her do it live every Saturday. You absolutely, I will I will second that. I'm, I'm going to be in attendance, of course. There you go. Unfortunately, due to the current state of the house, only a few rooms will be safely accessible during your stay. I wouldn't go wandering anywhere else if you value your limbs. The floors have been known to give out. If you know what's good for you, you'll stick to your room, your bathroom, and the kitchen. And hallways, I guess. But only the hallways you need to use to get to those places. I'll show you around so you know where it's safe to walk. You can leave your bags here for the time being. You have, so you live here? Lie. Yeah, lie. It's beautiful. You really let this place go, huh? I thought y'all were loaded. <laughs> Can't you afford to fix this stuff? Or remain silent? Aw, oh, thanks, BPL Steven, for having original art. All right, chat. They're pausing for you. What are your What are your choices? Yeah, two. But also loaded. Ooh. Okay. Oh, I 
I kind of want to go for loaded. It's what we rarely go for. I thought y'all were loaded. Can't you afford to fix this stump? Tabitha's dagger filled eyes are as much of an answer as you're going to get. Let's get this tour over with. Follow me. Oof, not getting along well so far. So <laughs> Put your bags down and follow Tabitha through a long, dusty hallway. She delicately steps over holes and tears in the floor, and you do your best to trace her steps. Kitchen. On Wednesdays, a woman from town comes in and does the cleaning. Her name is Janie. I wouldn't recommend socializing with her. She'll talk your ear off. If you need any food, there's fixings for peanut butter and jelly. Don't touch my mac and cheese or my ice cream. Those are off limits. Oh, and you can also access the garden through here, but it's pretty wild, so I wouldn't if I were you. Tip, some explore options prevent you from taking others. Choose, Choose carefully. carefully. We got, someone cleans this place? This, this place, place is nasty. nasty. It's nice. Why? It's perfect. Awesome, I love PB and J. Is there somebody in town to buy food? What if I want ice cream? What if I want ice cream? What if I want ice cream? Chad is wrestling with uh, how nice to be to Tabitha right now. That's <laughs> <laughs> so hard. But what if I want ice cream? Then you can buy yourself some at the general store. If you touch my stash, I will know, and there will be consequences. <laughs> how poor are we? <laughs> yeah. The general store? How folksy. Is it? It's a store that fulfills your general shopping needs. General store just describes what it is. Uh, did we say? I oh, we already did. Yeah. I love PB and J. <laughs> awesome. I love PB and J. How do you know it was one of my favorites? That smile oh. can't be real. <laughs> I just noticed that <laughs> smile for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> you can achieve. Yeah, there's a, a there's a steam achievement the first time you see that. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Horrible smile. Yeah. I didn't, but good for you. Uh, it, let's it, lie. It's perfect. This is so nice and big. It is. Alright, what's <laughs> next? The bathroom. Follow me. Great. It's been hours since I've gone. As the two of you leave the kitchen, you pass by a tuxedo cat sitting on the countertop. Uh, do we pet the cat? Oh, big question. Sorry. <laughs> what do we think, stream? Unsurprisingly, cat, cat, mod cat, Laura cat, and Amanda cat, says cat. Cat, 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 cat. cat. Before following your cousin down the hall, you decide to pet the cat. She bites you hard. <laughs> this is violently. Tap up the size. As you've now learned, you should not pet Fru Fru. If she wants to be pet, she'll let you know. Come on, the bathroom awaits. Oh my gosh. Can I ask a quick question to you guys? I'm yes. so sorry. So in no, the background of all of this, I'm just so, so interested from a technical perspective. I am the teen tech coordinator after all, so I gotta be geeky about this part. So I remember in like those, the, like the games like The Sims, where you build relationships with characters and each one of them has like a meter that's going up mm -hmm. and down while you're having these interactions. Is that what's working on, like in the background here? Like, is the game tracking your overall relationship and assigning it like a numeric value? I'm curious about it. You don't have to reveal everything, but like yeah no it, it's doing that except there's six meters per character instead of one yeah, uh, decided yeah. To do that. so we we've got like to... one that's uh how like agreeable you act towards a character versus how like confrontational you are there's one that measures how emotionally open versus emotionally closed you are there's one that measures uh if they think that you're like reliable or if they think you're kind of a flake and not confident there's one that measures uh, whether they think you're like smart or clever, or if you just consistently have bad ideas or lack tact. Um, there's also one that measures whether uh, they think you're someone who is kind of, kind of like um, sort of person who takes charge in the situation. Um, we labeled it boldness versus someone who's passive and like kind of is along for the ride and follows what other people suggest. And Tony just keeps track of And literally like, certain... you, you have that relationship with each character that you meet? Yeah. All those strata? That's amazing. Mm -hmm. wow. Tony's bonkers. Yeah. And a lot of times you'll get 
different dialogue based on a combination of other traits you have uh, with someone. So to talk a little bit about Tabitha, like um, if you are like just agreeable with her, but you're not like kind of building like an emotional relationship or you're not like standing your ground or anything like that, she like absolutely despises you, will walk all over you, just thinks you're the worst. Um, so there will often be checks that look at like, okay, well, what's your agreeability uh, measured in combination with like your emotional closeness or or just kind of your assertiveness? Anyway, it's very complicated. I, it sounds, okay. but it also sounds like there's a lot of replayability in, built into mm -hmm. that, especially yeah. the longer you get into those seven episodes. Yep. Wow. Guest bathroom. Not much to show. It's a bathroom. I'll wait outside. Do what you must if you must. Pee pee time. It's pee pee time. It's a nasty, wretched bath. Piles of junk sit untouched in the corners of the room and mystery stains paint the floor. I've always just loved the toothbrush <laughs> in a wine glass that still has wine in it. Great. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. All right, we're gonna, let's just go through some of these things. I like this bathroom. I like it. It's I like beautiful. It. Oh what God. a nice bathroom. Glad you like it. Uh, who does use this bathroom? Who exactly uses this bathroom? Guests. Lift, Lift toilet, toilet seat. seat. Uh oh. Bugs yeah. skitter from the bowl as you lift the seat. Use the facilities. A toilet. <laughs> a toilet is a toilet. Sure, it could be cleaner, but your business needs doing, and this is as good a place as any. You do what you must and rejoin your cousin out in the hall. Next up, guest bedroom. Last stop on the tour. Follow me. You like the bathroom? Do you like our horrible little bathroom? <laughs> I was gonna ask. Our like, theme you is nasty. <laughs> as as the artist, do you enjoy drawing that? Because you're like, this will squick them out hard, or are you grossed out yourself? It's great. I don't even see the gross stuff until I start adding, like, especially the last step where I kind of add like a mold brush to stuff, to make the walls look kind of moldy. Then it's like, all right, this is pretty gross. But is it gross enough? It never really does feel gross enough for me. I watch awesome. a lot of hoarders, so you know. I, I'm with you. I'm Maybe absolutely I'm with you. <laughs> the room smells old. Dust, mildew, wood rot, it has it all. A week of sleeping in this place might give you permanent lung damage. This is where you'll be staying. The linens are fresh. I had Janie wash them just last week. I had to endure a half hour rant about her kid to get her to do it, so you better be grateful. The closet is full of old family stuff, so you can't hang your clothes up. You can use the dresser. Should be empty. Ooh, what's with all the boxes? Old family stuff. What kind of family stuff? Unimportant family stuff. Do it who used to sleep here? Yeah, I was gonna. Who used to sleep here? When? This house is almost 150 years old. Many, many people have slept here. And now you'll sleep here, carrying around the fine tradition of the bedrooms being slept in. I again. Sure. Yeah. This room is nice. Thank you. Ugh, does every other word out of your mouth have to be a lie? I'm not an idiot, and you're not a good liar. Lucky for you, unlike anyone on your side of the family, I have a good enough sense of common decency to continue to host you rather than throw you out on the streets. So that's dialogue you only access if you keep lying to her. And you don't have street smart. Yeah, if you have street smart, she just believes you. I guess I'll Stop start. Not saying this. anything. <laughs> you can't think of anything else you'd like to say, but if there's one thing for certain, it's that you're not the sort of person who likes to, or even knows how to, verbally end conversations. You remain silent and wait for Tabitha to say something. I take it you don't have any other questions? Good. Follow me. I'll take you back to the foyer so you can collect your belongings. Foyer. They do foyer. call it foyer down there, though. The foyer. The foyer. The, and in Boston, we call it the foyer. <laughs> ah, regions. This concludes our tour. I'm afraid I must return to my duties, so you'll have to entertain yourself for the rest of the day. Oh, your <laughs> charger. Just plug in for the future. 
Don't expect to see much of me. <laughs> Tip, some dialogue options will uh, open additional conversation paths, some right away and others down the line. Alright, we've got key nine. Uh, Keen eye, yeah, there's back. Cool. Yeah, hey, that's I've just cool. like been a jerk to you and lied to your face since the second I got here. <laughs> What's the big deal? We were trying to those lies. I don't know what happened when my mom left, but that has nothing to do with me. You asked me to come here, but you're acting all pissed off that I actually came. Can't we just start fresh now that it's just us? Dot, dot, dot. Okay, I'm sorry I've been testy since you've gotten here. You've been fine. I'm just under a lot of pressure right now. Man, I gotta make this check harder. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody gets that dialogue. Yeah. Please just stay out of my hair until later, okay? I have work to do. What kind of work do you do? What kind of work do you do? I run the coal mine, same as every Scarlet who came before me. <laughs> oh, except for you and your mom. It requires a lot of time and concentration, so I'd appreciate if you didn't keep for long. Do you want to pick? Can I come? Oh! Right, that's an explorer. Okay. Can I come watch? Can I come watch? <laughs> what? No. The mind is dangerous. I can't babysit you and do my job. You know what we should go for. Hashtag Girl boss! Girl boss. <laughs> Damn, I can't believe you're only in your 20s and already running a coal mine. Talk about hashtag girlboss. Don't patronize me. I know you have nothing to your name. Barthibio Hortensia. Any other inane questions before I leave? I think we're hitting it off on the right foot with yeah. this Yeah, I mean, lying gets you everywhere? Yeah. I won't keep you, but we should hang out when you get back. We'll see. There's a lot that needs to get done this week. Zoom. Your cousin leaves through the front door. And now it's just you. You and this sprawling, decrepit estate. <laughs> so, do we will let chat choose this. The Forbidden Wings, Settle into Your Room, PB&J. Amazing chat, it's on you. Yeah. Choose your choice. Um, I was going to say, so you said something earlier that I picked up on where, Tony, you had said, like, I've got to make that check harder. Mm -hmm. Do you guys, like, change the kind of, like, interactions as you iterate on the game? Like, because obviously you've played through this a number of times, uh, and I'm sure you've got beta testers and stuff like that. Like, are you actively changing little things in episode one kind of behind the scenes? Um, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. We actually went through recently and changed all of the sprites for Stella, a character who pops up later. Interesting. All right, let's go for bin boys. But yeah, we're constantly updating, like especially as we see playthroughs or do stuff like this, where it's like, we should really fix that. Cool. With Kappa gone, there's no one stopping you from going into the Forbidden Wings of the estate. You immediately turn to the nearest door, only to be impeded by a padlock. Dang. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> um. Now that your cousin's gone, the aches and pains of your journey sink into your bones. You stumble back up the stairs to your room, suitcase in tow, eager to unwind before you face the rest of the day. You stand at the entrance to your room. Dresser. 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 You drag your suitcase over to the dresser and open the bottom drawer. An opossum lurks within. It is quiet, but angry. Offer peanuts? No, put the clothes. Oh yeah, put clothes on the possum. The poor thing looks cold in there, you think to yourself. You lay your clothes on top of the creature, arranging them in a little mess. It closes its mouth, somewhat more at ease than before, and looks up at you with shiny black eyes. This is my favorite sprite that I drew for the game. Possum covered in clothes. You close the drawer. Satisfied with yourself for a job well done. Um, I like it forbidden wigs. Chew the lock off. Bite through it. <laughs> anyway. All right. I wonder, should, should we just go straight to town? Just, just yeah, the entrance let's leave of, uh, There's a lot to do in the house, yeah. but I think let's get into yeah, the plot. Yeah, people can do we? things in the house yeah, by playing a episode also. one on their own for free on Steam and Itch. I recommend going and checking the drawers if you have talked to him. Oh, yeah, oh that's great. God. Yes. Doesn't seem like there's much else for you to do here right now. Head to town. Screwed PBNJ. We don't need that. We Who can, needs food? We need the thrill of adventure to sustain us. <laughs> yeah. And just as we transition, I'll remind everybody in the chat 
that if you have questions for these guys as creators, makers, artists, or just like, like you guys have an axolotl, can you tell me more about it? Like anything goes, well, almost anything. I keep saying that and I keep having to check myself, um, but uh, we'll forward your questions on to me and I'll find a space to ask them. So don't be shy. This is your time to ask these creators your questions. Sorry guys, go ahead. wonderful <laughs> job peppering in questions so far. It's yeah. very natural. Oh, thanks. Count, if you'd have known, uh, you'd wind up having to walk all the way back to town. You probably would have just asked Tabitha to leave you at the bus stop, especially with how unhappy she seemed to see you. If only you could wipe the slate between the two of you clean and bury some of the tension. Though maybe her mother's funeral isn't the best time for something like that. Then again, maybe it's the perfect time. It's really pretty out here. Continue down the path. Finally, you made it back to town. The holler, as that guy on the bus called it, has probably seen better days. It still has the feeling of an idyllic country town, but its sidewalks are cracked and many of the storefronts are boarded up, their windows dusty with aid. The chill breeze sweeps down the lane, and you shudder, suddenly feeling as if you're peering into a grave. Oh. Gretchen, come back! The father and strangers! Oh, I haven't seen you around here before. Hot. The young woman is noticeably flustered by your appearance. It's a phenomenon that you, as a hot, are all too familiar with. <laughs> I'm sorry. Thank you. It's good to hear the laughs. Sorry about Gretchen. She can be very slippy when she wants to be. Hope she didn't scare you. We should pet the dog, dog, right? You reach out and scratch Gretchen behind the ears. Her fur is soft and warm. She wheezes excitedly, digging her little nose into your palm and licking her hand. Aw, I'm so glad you two are getting along. Isn't she just the cutest? How energetic she gets, you never know she's 17. That's too old for a pug. Uh, yeah, she's 17. That's gotta be really old for a dog, right? Sure is. She's about 84 in dog years. I'm hoping she beats the current record holder and makes it to 19. Or better yet, 20. The more time we get together, the better. Isn't that right, Gretch? Uh, but what am I doing? I got so caught up in the excitement of meeting someone new that I entirely forgot to introduce myself. I'm Stella. It's not often I see a strange face up in the holler. Every now and then there's a new crop of coal folks, but you don't look dusty enough for that. You aren't in town for the funeral, are you? The Scarlet funeral? Yeah, do it. Correct. Offered her the wild peanuts. You hold out the dripping bag of peanuts. It's polite to offer her food in new social situations. Oh, that's really kind of you to offer, but I couldn't take your food. You should hang on to those in case you get peckish. Anyways, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that you're Tabby's cousin, right? That's the only person I can think of who would come to town for the funeral. How's she holding up? To be honest, I've been a little worried about her. I'll hold up in that big house. Gotta do the tabby one, right? Yeah. I'm sorry, did I hear you right? I can't imagine Tapha ever going by something so bubbly. She did back when I knew her better. It's been a while. I hope she's okay. She's struggling. She didn't like my compliments. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think she's doing too well. She's been icy, but it feels like she's putting it on as a front. I called her a girl boss and she got mad. <laughs> She's always been a little rough around the edges. To be honest, it's always been hard to tell if that's just the way she is or if she's just been putting on an actor whole life. To think she's been up in that old mansion all by herself. It'll probably be good for her now that you're staying there, even if she doesn't think so herself. Thanks for letting me know, by the way. Are you two friends? Are you friends? I was probably closer than most people have gotten to be able to call her a friend. The school here is really small, so everyone had to at least get along with everybody else. She was a grade ahead of me, but everyone knew her, especially since she's a Scarlet. We wound up bonding a bit when we were both in the school's production of A Midsummer Night's Dream. I was Puck and she was Mustard Seed. As you might have expected, she was more than a little prickly, but I managed to soften her up a bit in the end. But then she graduated and that was that. Oh, if you just got to town, you must be starving. I was just on my way to the diner for a coffee, and they've got amazing biscuits. My treat! Follow. 
The pleasant aroma of greasy breakfast food hangs heavy in the air. In contrast with the empty, lifeless atmosphere of the family estate, the diner is filled with the comforting din of human life. All of which grinds to a sudden halt as the patrons realize that a stranger has entered the establishment. I love this moment. You. Hey, it's, everyone. It sneaks up on you. I'm Bartholomew Hortensia, just in town for the funeral. Nice to meet y'all. The woman behind the counter beams back at you. Hello there, and welcome to the holler. You just let us know if you need anything, okay? You nod politely, giving a small wave as you instill a slide into the nearest booth. Looks like you'll probably be the talk of the town for a while. It's not often folks around here meet any strangers. And with who you're related to, well, folks love their gossip, you know? As you settle into the booth, you can't help but pick up some of the murmurs of conversation around you. Oh, we're gonna be rude. Listen in. Stella pet scratching while you take a quick look around the diner. At the counter are two policemen and a woman you assume to be the owner, so they shoot sidelong glances in your direction while whispering to each other. Vivian's kid. Never thought we'd actually meet them. Looks so much lacquer. <laughs> oh yes, those eyes are unmistakable. That haunted look. I always thought it would go away once she finally got out of this town, but I guess unhappiness was baked into her DNA. But my oh my, they wear well, don't they? Because you're hot. Yeah, <laughs> that they do. A young mother and her syrup-stained child sit at a table across from them. Bobby, who's that? <laughs> don't stare, Tulip. That's Miss Tabitha's cousin. Oh, wow, they're way beautifuler than... Huh? <laughs> you shouldn't say such things. It's not very nice. Now, are you going to finish your pancakes? They're almost cold, sweet pea, and you've got to get home to help Daddy. In the far back corner, a man sits alone at a small table, sipping coffee and reading the paper. <sighs> Why are the strangers who wander into town never gorgeous blonde ladies of an appropriate age? Why is it always cold boys, punks, and whippersnappers? Lastly, a group of coal miners sit hunched around the corner booth, readily scarfing down heaping plates of food. So, so that's the boss's cousin? There's that second funeral this week, if I'm remembering right. For old Miss Pearl Ann. May she rot in peace. Oh, let the lady rest, Lloyd. One shouldn't speak ill of the dead, no matter how foul they were. Especially before they've even been so much as laid to rest. If you'd have been around her in her heyday, you'd still be speaking ill too, Tommy. She, he's right. Nastiest woman I've ever met. That Tabitha is a blessing compared to her. Curse the whole lot of them. My every scarlet burn in hell. That's enough of that. <laughs> hey, Stella, I went ahead and fixed you up a coffee. They gracefully place a cup of specially brewed coffee in front of Stella. Aw, shucks. Thanks, Avery. Then here's some bacon for the little lady. Gretchen sniffs at the bacon and digs in. Anything for you, darling? Peanuts. Peanuts. Can I ask a quick question? Actually, yeah, yeah. I have so many things. So first of all, I need to harken back to something that uh, Abby said earlier that the, the possum was the favorite thing. The possum with the clothes was a favorite thing for you to draw. But what about Gretchen? Though? Can we just establish like this is maybe one of the cutest little doggies in all of gaming? Like I need to establish that. Did it, was that like was that a particular? Because I mean, I feel like you guys are animal lovers. You know what I mean on some level. Um, was that fun or was she hard to draw like i need to know more about this dog she was hard to draw it was took me she? a long time to settle on the design for uh you know an appropriately ugly yet also cute at the same time dog true i have we eventually settled on a pug it's just kind of the saddest of them so i do like her sad little face and i love pugs but i feel like i never quite capture it you know i feel I... like i did a good job with Gretchen. Gretchen is amazing. Also, are we seeing Stella 2.0 right now? Yeah. yeah. What can you describe any of the changes? Like what why she changed and what what changed about her? Look like Stella to me. She always looked like me trying to draw Stella and failing at it. Uh, so I changed her entire head. <laughs> Every so single one of these I switched out the head, which took a lot of work because I did not do a good job uh, keeping large files and like good saves of the Stella sprites. Just chin like is maybe, pointed. Yeah, the chin is a little more pointed. Um, Generally, eyes, see the nose in profile. 
I think oh, that was one of the things that was consistently jarring about some of the earlier sprites. When she turned, her nose line disappeared. She looked a little weird. Uh, her hair just looks a little bit more natural. Like, I didn't just try to figure out on the fly what I was drawing. Uh, and her eyes are a lot different. Uh, they're kind of more chill. Yeah. Because I figured I'm, out how to draw better. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm borderline fawning here, so I'll stop. But, like, I think it's so amazing that, you know what I mean? Like, first of all, that as this, like, sort of indie you know, tight-knit team, you're just able to make that change, right? Because, like, in larger, you know, studios or anything like that, first of all, the concept of making that change and the kinds of time commitment and monetary commitment for something like that, you know, I don't think a lot of places would consider it worth it, but, like, to hear you as an artist really, like, finding this character and really needing to represent that character and, you know, being able to... I don't know, I just feel like there's something really, like really respectable and beautiful about that process like she's not quite right and it needs to change even though the 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 episode has been released we'll just do it i don't know it's just very cool um yeah 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 sorry i'm that was it fawning over no worries. <laughs> you hold out the still dripping bag of boiled peanuts crush and sniffs at the spatters of fry on the table and lips your lips expectantly i also have a few kills Stephen asking about how modular the sprites are for I can go with the sprites. So yeah, do you want to talk about sprites for a sec? Yeah, so the sprites, uh, they're all kind of an individual drawing, but I have basic line art and a few like heads I swap out or like, I pose for it. Uh, and then I just go in and basically make each one a separate drawing of its own. So it's pretty, uh, switching out like the t-shirts is going to be pretty easy. Like Stella sometimes will have a jacket off, which means I have to redraw the whole body sprite. And I then can't wait all until the again. that Bob reveal she's going to be yoked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah. And, uh, Stella is athletic. Meanwhile, like a character like Avery, basically wears the same colored shirt every day, but with different plants on it. So that's a lot easier. I can just do different plants. And that's something I swap out. But yeah, it's a uh, for those sprites. That's how it goes. Those are also face sprites. Like those are the sitting down Stella sprites versus the standing up Stella sprites. Stella has like 300 sprites in this episode, maybe 350. Oh yeah, uh, especially later in the game when we get to kind of the parts where you see the interactive backgrounds. Those are all individual sprites that won't be replicated throughout the rest of the game. And just yeah. in terms yeah. of like labor, how how much is an individual Stella sprite take you? How long does that take to draw? Uh, I'd say a couple of hours uh, for each individual, like from start to finish. But then I have kind of a template that I can swap out facial features. Right, like there, there's, there's maybe ten different iterations of her body. And then there's like face, like drawing a new face is maybe like 15 minutes. Wow. Anyway, so that's how it goes. It's still a lot of work. Like yeah. redoing all the sprites. There it were took parts. Three to four days. Yeah, there were parts of the original sprites we could save, um, but again, the heads were tired. Cool. Anyways, no thanks. I shouldn't take gifts while I'm on my shift. And anything I can get you though? Biscuit. 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 I'll have a biscuit. <laughs> Look, I'm trying to find a way to, to differentiate oh. the Avery and player character voices. <laughs> Best in the county. Oh, and uh, sorry if you're lost. Do we have the chance to respond or not? Glad you took my advice with the biscuit. You won't regret it. You know, if you ever want to get rid of those peanuts, there's a trash can <laughs> right by the door. Anyways, the funeral's not till Sunday, right? That gives you quite a bit of time to slum around town. I'm trying to think if there are any cool events going on this week. There's always a reading adventure at the library, which is supposed to be for little kids, but I do it every month anyway. Library next episode! Shout out! Beep, 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 beep. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we'll have to do the library dialogue. Oh, but yeah, I hope that's not book smart only. Oh, and I'm pretty sure Avery's throwing a party Saturday night, so that's a fun thing to look forward to. And there's the weekly Sunday potluck. That should be right after the funeral, too, so it'll be a special occasion. No, we can't comment on the reading sure, adventure. Sure, sure. Booksmart could comment on the reading adventure. <laughs> Is the pot like a church thing? Would it be weird for me to come if I'm not a member? No, no, the Sunday thing is coincidental. It's actually hosted by the library. Library. Uh, not too many people go to this church around here, if I'm being honest. Hell yeah, religion. Religion <laughs> Subtle. Religion sucks. <laughs> I spend a lot of time on Reddit. Uh, I like the first one. Yeah. But not really just in the south. That's gotta be unusual. I know, I know. We must seem like such heathens. 
but there are plenty of God-fearing people in town. They just aren't the biggest fans of the local church. Well, the building's fine, but the pastor's another story. There's just something a little off about the guy. You'll get what I mean if you ever meet him. And unfortunately, you probably will. Anyway, those are all the big events I can think of. As for the day-to-day, -day, any idea how you want to kill time for the rest of the week? Sure, you know. Yeah. Something's telling me this is a loaded question. You've got something in mind. <laughs> what? Was I being that obvious? My job means I spend a lot of time in the woods with a camera. And it's always better when someone else is there, too. Before Stella can finish, Avery turned for certain to biscuits in town. Hey, Winnie wanted to, uh, to give you a biscuit on the house. She sends her condolences. <laughs> what <am> I, like, <laughs> Chow <a> down. <laughs> Looks great. Thanks, Avery. It looks great. Pick up the biscuit. It's delicate and fluffy. Nearly crumbles at your touch. Buttery warmth that emanates from its surface. You take a bite. It melts in your mouth as if it were nothing but butter suspended in a thin matrix of dough. Truly, this is a perfect biscuit. Wait, we should do the I have better. Also, I like yeah. I have to compliment the writing just there because no matter what, what con like where I am, how much I've eaten or not eaten, that line always makes you want a biscuit. Just flat. Hell yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. I am a biscuit appreciator, so. Did I? Hi, BPL3. Uh, asks, has anyone asked about the music yet? We have Nobody to, has. And I was actually open. just noticing it myself, yeah. Nice. You should yeah, It's good, but I've had better biscuits in my life. <gasps> you ever been to this restaurant called Bojangles? I had one of theirs on the bus ride over. Now that was a good biscuit. No one ever picks this one because it's really mean. But it's so funny. It's so funny. It's funny. You're lying through your teeth. This is the best biscuit you've ever had. Sorry to laugh at my own jokes. <laughs> yeah, I've heard of Bojangles. To each their own, I guess. Avery lingers at the table for a moment. So, as Stella mentioned, she's famous. Ha! <laughs> oh, Avery, I'm not famous. Look, if you're not going to go around tooting your own horn, you know I'm going to do it for you. Stella sighs. I'm a YouTuber. Wait, what? <laughs> oh, <laughs> you and everyone else. How does that make you money? Wait, what? It's not a big deal. I mean, it pays the bills, but it's really just a passion project, you know? You're too modest, Stella. Your videos are really good. You should watch them sometime, Barthi Mew Hortendia. We like the Discovery Channel, but with better research. No, I mean, what's YouTuber? No, I mean, <laughs> what's YouTuber? Oh, uh, huh. You see, there's this website called YouTube. You can upload videos there that anyone in the world can watch, and that's what I do for a living. I go out into the woods at night and film myself hunting cryptids, which are like mythical creatures like Bigfoot and Nessie. I think the best video to start with would be the river one. Not the late, but you know, the controversial one. Oh yeah, the Catawba River Runner. I didn't expect much out of that footage at the time, but it wound up being my most popular video by far. So the River Runner is a cryptid that's only known from a single sighting. Two Boy Scouts thought they saw something big and weird in the Catawba River, and that's all I had to go on. But then I wound up catching this on camera. So that's weird. Sarah pulls out her phone and shows you a clip of something in the river. I really like what you did with the video. Thank you. Scared in the woods three. <laughs> Haunted ice cream parlor. Is yeah. that really what it says? Yes. Oh my god, that's amazing. Three. It also Thank looks you. like a hyperbole and a half drawing. The second one down. <laughs> I can't Thank help you. but see it. It's awesome. <laughs> and then uh, just a lo-fi channel. In Appalachia. <laughs> Dang. If, if we did in-house animation, it could be sweet to start off that as a YouTube channel. <laughs> you know, that uh, integrated marketing. marketing yeah. Oh, that's, that's awesome. awesome. That's a great idea. If only we had the time. <laughs> Some folks said it was a beaver, but if that was the case, it'd be at least twice the size of any beaver I've seen. I also had people saying it was a dog or even a capybara that must have escaped from the local wildlife sanctuary. I'm still not sure what it was, and I'm the one who saw the thing with my own two eyes. Yeah, it's not life. <laughs> Despite the shaky camera footage, you can clearly make out the shape of the creature's head and scope and body proportions. You're pretty sure it's a mountain lion. I, th I think that's a mountain lion. Can't you see its little kitty cat ears? No, no way. It is absolutely not a mountain lion. 
There are no mountain lions this far east. I did a whole video on the Appalachian mountain lion myth and found jack squat. And there's no reason one would be swimming in the river like this. They're not fans of water. And the body is too long. No way. Personally, I'm a fan of a copy bar up here. Sure, it's not like any local sanctuaries are missing one, but there's always people keeping exotic animals and pets. Kind of like a sewer gator type situation. Ha, huh, exactly. Some exotic pet owner set it free, and now it will forever roam the Catawba, confusing Boy Scouts and YouTube commenters for years to come. So, speaking of things to do around town, I was actually planning on filming this week's video tonight. But I was wondering if maybe you'd want to come along? It's a pretty easy one this week. We wouldn't even have to camp anywhere. I'm gonna go after the... Wait, no spoilers. Whoops, sorry, Avery. That's ah, okay, I should probably get back to it instead of standing around chatting with friends. See y'all around. Now that the coast is clear, I'm going after Skunk Ape. You stinky. <laughs> you stinky. <laughs> That's what they say. Uh, you should be able to smell it before you see it, according to some sources. Most skunk ape sightings are from Florida. But while I was doing research for last week's video, I came across a report where a lady from a town over claimed to have seen one on her deck playing tug of war with her dog. And as I leave no stone unturned, I decided it was worth investigating. So what do you say? Want to tag along? Hold the camera for me while I narrate against a darkening sky, that sort of thing. Against my better Jackson. <laughs> yes. I will follow a girl I just met into the woods at night to chase after dangerous beasts. Sounds fun. Ha! <laughs> well, you put it that way, it sure does sound like this is a bad idea. But trust me, we'll have a great time. It's been a while since I've had anyone besides Gretchen out there with me. This is gonna be a lot of fun! I actually started the channel with a couple buddies of mine back in middle school, so it's kind of like a blast from the past. Me and Kanika and Reese running around in the woods, flipping over rocks and bothering salamanders. Our videos were terrible. We had a lot of fun, and that's all that mattered to us. You know, that gets me thinking. I wonder if they'd be down to come along with us, get the old gang back together. Though I guess Kanika has to close out the general store tonight, so I'm pretty sure she's a no-go. But Reese, I think there's a decent chance we could get him to come out of his hiding hole if he's up for it. Do you mind if I take a quick call? Stella pulls out her phone and dials it, waiting while it rings. Reese, dude, what's up? Feels like it's been forever. Aw, <laughs> oh, man, I'm sorry to hear that. Do you want me to come by or...? <laughs> okay, if you're really sure. <laughs> but if you change your mind... <laughs> Oh, I was just calling to ask if you wanted to come out to the woods tonight. <laughs> I met somebody cool in town today. They're Tabitha's cousin. I know, yeah, just here for the week. <laughs> anyway, we're going out to look for Skunk Ape. <laughs> we could take the easier trails if that would help. Dang, man, that sounds awful. I hope you take it easy tonight. I'll swing by sometime this week and we can have a more low-key hang. How's that? Huh, yeah, I'll bring them too. Talk to you soon. Bye, bud. Good job, Tony. Thank you. <laughs> Immersive. <laughs> Looks like it's just you and me, pal. Did he ask you to bring me to his house? Why? He's excited to meet you, of course. I think you'll find most town folks in town are. I'm glad it's just the two of us. Mm. Yeah, fair enough. You just got here, and I'm probably already overloading you a bit. Sorry about that. We should stop by his place sometime this week, though. I think you two would like each other. He can be a little rough around the edges, but in, like, a funny way. Anyways, we've got a skunk cape to hunt. So we should probably head out if we want to make it up the mountain before it's too dark. Come on, let's blow this popsicle stand. <laughs> Can I actually pause and, and um, ask you guys a couple questions? So first Go of all, I, like Stella always, like this moment in the game always reminds me, like they're, like part of the marketing for game is like, there are full romance options as a part of this game as well. It's not pure, I mean, at, certainly at the core of it, it feels genre based, like it's a horror game, but like, then again, you form these like deep, like lasting relationships. Like Tony, you were talking about the matrix of 
personality yeah. and stuff like that. And I'm, I mean, I, I'm not going to ask for spoilers in terms of like, who can you romance? But I, I trust that it's a lot of different characters over the course of the, the seven episodes. Um, one thing that stood out to me, and I know that like, I'm, I can't be alone here um, in the audience even, was um, this is the first, I, I think um, Avery is a non-binary character goes by they, them mm -hmm. pronouns. And uh, we, as the protagonists, are also referred to by our pronouns as well. Mm -hmm. And I just noted that as, you know, a queer person myself, um, you know, I definitely, you know, as soon as I see that, not necessarily being flashed in front of my face with a big neon sign, but something that's sort of built into the game, I instantly, and I mean, again, this is just how marketing works with me, uh, but I'm sure I'm not alone, uh, you know, I instantly feel more at ease and I feel more invested because of that fact. And I wonder, like, you know, in terms of, uh, like, your, like, experience as creators, um, how important you felt that was to build in and sort of, like, what you... Um, you know, thought of in terms of how to do that in a, in a way that I feel is very respectful is the wrong word, but it's the right word at the same time. Like very like honor honoring and very like inclusive is the word. Like why the why the move towards inclusivity? Because it was like three lines of code. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So it was it was like super easy to do and, and why not? Yeah, why um, not let people play as who they want to be yeah. and who they are. And uh, it's I feel like representation is a wonderful thing. To just kind of expose people who may not know about those things or uh, to just make people feel more comfortable being yeah. like a non-binary character in this other town. Just yeah. seeing another non-binary person walking around is probably good. Yeah. Yeah. I also just like I feel you see this a lot in media. I guess less so in games because games are, um, you know, consistently five years behind the culture, give or take. But there, so much inclusive media, like really, really draws attention to those aspects of characters' identities, often in a way that like comes across as suffering porn. Mm. Yeah, there's suffering for it, and then there's also kind of a look at the great job we're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, we totally know what these characters are like in person, and they just come across as not really like people. Yeah. So it's very much kind of a people first, like character first, and then this just happens to be an aspect of their yeah, character. It's much like in real life, where you talk to somebody and it's like, oh, they're not binary. It's like, all right, that's another part of them. Right. They're also a complex human outside of that. It's a kind of media that, like, we don't see it. A lot of and wanted more of to exist so that's how we structured it absolutely i mean I, just if i can say it so i'm a huge yeah. gamer geek and i gotta say like this is one of the first games that i can clock historically that treats the the, the concept of a non-binary identity in exactly this kind of way with this kind of you know sort of like it belongs and there's no additional there's no suffering there's no you know what i mean like and i just feel like in a weird way, I feel like I'm going to be referencing this game a lot in terms of like my thought of queer inclusion and gender inclusion in games. So anyway, bravo for that, certainly. Um, or bravo. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> awesome. Bravo. Uh, oh, and also to ask, uh, to, to answer a more implied question from what you just said, yes, you can romance a free. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, we, we're we're pretty open pretty about our romance options. You yeah. can romance Stella, Avery, uh, Kanika, who you'll meet later. Um, the librarian. Yeah. Wait. Oscar, the librarian, who you'll meet in episode two, and Reese, who will continue to be brought up, but you won't meet in person until episode three. And uh, to we have to nerf him because he's very hot. Yeah. <laughs> and to I guess disappoint. Uh, a strange subset of our fans. No, you cannot date your cousin. <laughs> we well, get asked that a lot. <laughs> um, I will, before, I know that we, we've got to get back to it, but I will say, yeah, is Oscar the chubby bearded guy it, that mm -hmm. was in the, okay, so when I saw that image, I'm not going to lie, I also felt very seen. Um, oh, as a great. chubby bearded librarian. And I'm just going to say that and leave it out there. 
wonderful. You're in the game now. Well, you'll have some very difficult decisions to make. Oh, great. <laughs> Awesome. Right. Thank you, guys. And again, just for yeah, everybody's uh, edification in the chat, so we are the Boston Public Library Teen Services Twitch stream. We are currently in the throes of episode one of Scarlet Hollow with its creators, Tony Howard Arias and Abby Howard. They are here to answer your questions. They literally created this thing um, start to finish with some help from some outside, you know, um, you know, sound designers, I think, and other people that are in the credits that you'll see. But like, it's like, this is such a labor of love of their own design. And this is your opportunity to literally ask them anything about their process, anything about uh, the amazing art of Abby, the incredible relationship dynamics and development game design um, from Tony and, and all of the work that they did together. So uh, fire those questions off in the chat and we'll get back to it. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Thank you guys. All right. Uh, let's, uh, let's not leave a tip. We didn't spend any money. Nah, this is America. <laughs> Generous tips only. You reached into your pocket, pull out a crumpled five. Oh, that's awesome of you. Avery will appreciate that, I'm sure. It's all turned sleep. We follow. Fine. Here we go. It hadn't been very cold when you first arrived in town, but as the sun dips closer and closer to the horizon, a chill descends upon the hollow, and you see your situation with renewed clarity. You're in a new place, far from civilization and the people you know, following someone you just met into a dark forest in search of monsters. You feel... Oh yeah, this is a fun... Yeah, yeah I like to include kind of check-in moments like this with <laughs> the player. That makes you kind of reflect on what it's like to be in your character's shoes. Again, anything to break people out of, like, just reading optimizing their decision making. So, um, interestingly, does this have an, does the choice here have an impact on the story? No. Oh, wow. Nothing. That's It's just cool. kind of a way for you to reflect on the story itself and, and feel like you're more of a part of it. To That's say how cool. you feel. Did you come up with that on your own? Or did, like, because, like, that seems like a really, like, I haven't heard of that kind of game mechanic, but it makes a lot of sense to me psychologically. Years of frustration from running Dungeons and Dragons uh, games for people who uh, mostly like to roll dice. <laughs> Are right. I, I love my players. Nothing. But yeah, I, I'm clicking nothing. Right. <laughs> you feel nothing. You aren't particularly worried about or invested in what happens tonight. You're just along for the ride, putting one foot in front of the other until it's over and you get to sleep. You gotta love this brisk fall weather. This past summer was the hottest on record, since last year at least. You know how it is these days. Each summer is the hottest yet until the next summer, which always finds a way to be so much worse. It's just nice to feel a chill in the air and see the leaves change, like normalcy is restored, if only for a moment. Sorry if that was a bit of a bummer. We should talk about something more fun, like sky games. <laughs> What's the weirdest thing? What's the weirdest thing you've seen in these woods, other than anything cryptic related, of course? Oh gosh, that's a good one. Let me think. Well, there's always the deer I saw stealing baby birds out of a nest and eating them. That was pretty messed up. But I think most people know about that these days. I've seen tons of videos of other deer doing it, so I'm not sure if it counts as weird anymore. That's real. Deer do that. Oof. Oh, Tetanus Lake. That's definitely the weirdest thing. Uh, the weirdest. It was a five foot deep, 30 foot wide pile of old cans and bottles and assorted garbage with grass and trees growing on it, so you could barely tell it was there until you stepped on it. Which is also real. <laughs> it was practically solid ground with how much it had been compressed, but you could still fall through if you weren't careful, hence the name. Better be up on your shots if you want to go messing around in there. It was all stuff from the 50s too, which was super neat. I salvaged a few bottles that I keep in my dresser for a little souvenir. You ever hunt things that are encrypted? You know, like ghosts, demons, werewolves, that sort of thing? Oh, yeah, for sure. I used to go after all sorts of spooky stuff. I never had much luck, though, especially when it came to ghosts. Back when I first started doing solo videos, I'd go into all sorts of old abandoned buildings, hoping I'd stumble across some sort of activity. But nothing ever happened. It was always just me and my camera in an old house getting worked up over a gust of wind or a creaky floorboard. When all said and done, I've just been a lot luckier with cryptids. I want to believe in ghosts so bad. And I can't rule out the possibility that there really are true hauntings out there, but if there are, I sure as heck haven't seen any myself. Werewolves, I kind of lump in with cryptids. I'd be shocked if there actually were people out there who turned into animals, but werewolf lore lines up pretty well with the great beast genre of cryptid. 
As for demons, I don't know. I honestly don't even want to consider the possibility that they exist. Because if they really are out there, geez, a lot of folks are doomed to an eternity of flames. <laughs> so let's hope all that's just bunk, am I right? What about alien? This was one of the most complicated menus I had to write for this game. <laughs> the aliens, like, sub-menus. Uh-huh. Don't even get me started. Did you see those UFO videos the government declassified? Aliens are definitely real, and they have absolutely visited Earth. Like, I believe in aliens way more than I believe in cryptids. You don't see me hunt hunting aliens out here, because we know they're real. Tony did do a lot of editing. Oh, there's a the hot, there's a hot, uh... <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> if aliens were real, I think they would have visited me by now. They'd be so, looking for the perfect human specimen. And not to toot my own horn, but I've been called that three or four times before. <laughs> Other people's words, not mine. <laughs> Bartholomew well. channeling Blanche Devereaux from the Golden Girls. <laughs> <laughs> well, they aren't wrong. Maybe aliens have a different idea on what the perfect human specimen looks like, though. Maybe they have a particular affinity for truckers and late-night convenience store clerks, and that's why they keep messing with them. Let's move on. Yeah, let's move on. We'll leave some stuff up to people who play. Yeah. Did you hear that? Oh, calm down, Gretchen, you old mutt. <laughs> Same to you, Stella. You're always jumping at nothing, girl. Every time you watch My a playthrough... My voice disappears in five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Every time you watch a playthrough of the game, no matter if people have not been doing voices for everybody else, as soon as Duke shows up, they... <laughs> they all do this voice. Yeah. Even if they're like... Like, British folks. Yeah. Dutch folks. <laughs> yeah. Spanish folks. They all just slip into like a perfect southern accent. Oh, sorry for being jumpy, Duke. I thought you were... Some creature of darkness. Ah, girl, I'm just the old Duke. <laughs> now what the hell are you looking for way out here? Skunk Ape. Sorry, I missed. <laughs> and who's this you've suckered it to come with me? Wait a tick. You are it. Is that? Yeah. Tick. Welcome to the holler. My condolences. I'll keep you in my prayers. Sounds like a threat. Another stranger, another opportunity for a salty introduction. You hold out the slippery bag in front of Duke. It's grown quite fragrant since you first put it in your rucksack, like the scent of old beer. You're pretty sure that's what it's supposed to smell like. All peanuts from your backpack. I'm all set, thank you. Now both y'all head on back to town to hear. It's best you see your well clear in this area than that. I'm about dealing with my own critter. Won't be too appreciative of a couple of fools with a camp of scare away more sensitive wild. What are you hunting tonight? Something tall and hairy? Something musky? You see anything like that recently? Wouldn't you like to know? You never could stay in your business, Stella Richmond. Put that damn camera down. Aw, oh, come on, dude. Maybe I could help out. I'm pretty good at tracking. You know I learned from the best. That you did. But I have yet to see a shred of proof you listen to any of it, the way you tromp around the woods at night yelling about chuck a and what have you. Something's been getting at my chickens. I lost three this week and can't afford to lose any more than that. I'm so sorry to hear that. But, huh, I wonder if Skunk Ape has a taste for chicken. <laughs> now see, this is why I don't come to you about these things. It ain't no Skunk Ape, whatever the hell it is. I know exactly what this is, but I know you won't believe it. I tell ya. Aw, uh, Duke, you don't think it's... I do, actually. It's this damn mountain lion. They're out here, Stella. I don't care what your little investigation turned up. You haven't been out in these woods as long as I have. Those sons of bitches are sneaky. Of course you wouldn't find any of one night of tracking. And I know for a fact that's what's been getting at my chickens. It couldn't be anything else. I'm telling you, man, mountain lions are extinct in these parts. There hasn't been an actual sighting since the 1990s, and even those were iffy. I can't believe you go out there on your YouTube saying some river monster spotted by a couple of school, school age Boy Scouts has been 100% confirmed. Yet Appalachian cougars are some kind of far fetched fantasy made up by geezers like me. You made me look like a fool. I read those comments people were posting on your video. They were calling me all kinds of names just for seeing things with my own eyes that I know to be true. 
I'm sorry, dude. I didn't mean to stick anybody on you. I just don't think it's plausible. You'll eat those words when I come carrying a mountain lion corpse out of those woods at dawn. But if you two don't want a face full of buckshot, I suggest you run, run home and stay out of the woods tonight. Right. Oh. Right on, dude. Kill that mountain oh, God. lion. You want, can't you buy it? Just buy more chickens. Yeah. yeah. A little bit more chicken dialogue. What's the big deal? <laughs> Aren't chickens really cheap? Can't you just buy new ones? I don't even know where to begin with what just came out of your mouth. Don't you know it ain't polite to ask about finances? And don't you know how important a man's chickens are? They keep food on my table. They keep my soil fertilized. They help me earn a living. And most of all, they're my pride and joy. I raised them all with my two hands, been with me since they was first laid by their moms. Their family. The chickens we lost last week, they was the prettiest little Wyandots you'd ever meet. They come up and eat right out of my hand, sit on my lap. Sure, I'll raise more chickens, but there's no replacing birds like these. Oh, shoot. Did you what did you choose? Oh, ah! <laughs> Wait, what did you choose? <laughs> What'd you do? <laughs> You're just mad they didn't live long enough to get eaten by you. You say you love them, but how could you truly love them if they were meant to put food on your table? Monster! You do know eggs come out of chickens, right? You practically fall out of them on the daily. Killing them would lose me more food than I'd gain by a wide margin. Oh, I didn't actually know it. Hold on. Yeah. Oh, I didn't actually know that. Like what? They come out of the butt? Oh my god. Are there are there babies inside? What How are you holding now? it yeah. together as you're writing this? I'm sorry. <laughs> you, you can call it the butt. Most everything that comes out of a chicken comes out of there. And no, so long as you keep the roosters away from them, the eggs aren't fertilized. They're just protein that would otherwise go to waste. What are they teaching you in these city schools? All right, Barthy Bar Bar Hortensia, I think you've baffled poor Duke enough for one night. I think it's best we just head home and leave the poor man to his wild goose chase. Have a nice one, Duke. Not knowing where eggs come from. <laughs> that ain't right. Can I ask? I'm well, sorry. Yeah. Uh, so we had a question in the chat, actually, that was pretty good. And I think Duke kind of maybe embodies this. But, like, is Scarlet Hollow completely fictional? Or is there a place or an experience that you're drawing from as writers that you kind of base it on? Because it's so real. You know what I mean? But at the same yeah. time, like... So, I guess know. I grew up in the South. So it it's did. just kind of a... Uh, cultural miasma that I absorbed uh, while I was down there of just, these are the people you meet in small towns. <laughs> There's that. But, I don't know. I didn't grow up in the South. Yeah, <laughs> you like, Tony manages to write it pretty good, so yeah. I think it's just a uh, pretty good writer. I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll really take amazing. it. <laughs> <laughs> also, I love everybody in the chat. I know I haven't been responding a lot, but <laughs> all of your comments have been read and loved. Yeah. We're trying to keep an eye on it for you, but like Duke is just like such a character. And I was saying earlier, like the music also when Duke comes in, like it, it feels like because I browse some of the the music and some mm -hmm. of it's tied to character. And mm -hmm. I feel like that was a really good move because as soon as that music starts playing, it like complements who he is, and we know like even better who he is as a result of the yeah. music. Yeah, Brandon Art, is incredible. He's so good at working off of character descriptions and also just like weird metaphors. Yeah, we'll send Often, him some like, what, nonsense. What, we were sending him stuff for Oscars music. theme for episode two. It was just, hey, Brandon, can you write a song that smells like dads and coffees and feels like nostalgia? Here's some big instruments we might want to use in it. And then he's like back to us the next day with something brilliant. Like two days is all it takes for him to be like, oh, you mean this? And it's like, yeah, we didn't know that's what we meant. But yes. So working with him is just incredible. Yeah, that sounds incredible. Yeah, we really lucked out. Okay, the coast is clear. There's no way we're letting Duke edge us out that easy. Come on, I know a trail that'll let us get around him. Let's see. Are you sure you don't want to, like, watch a movie? Wouldn't you rather go home and hang out? Maybe watch a movie? <laughs> I'm a lot less comfortable going out in the woods now that I know we'll be sharing them with a guy who will shoot anything that moves. Aw, you don't have to worry about old Duke. I've been out tracking with him before. The man sounds like a truck crashing through the trees when he walks. 
Even if we do cross paths, we'll hear him long before he catches wind of us. She says, having just been surprised by him. Right. We can always do a movie night later, but right now my viewers come first. They demand cryptids, and I am duty-bound to give them what they so crave. There's no shaking you, is there? You'll just follow me until I finally relent and go monster hunting with you. I promise it'll be fun and safe. The trail's just up this way. Let's go. Oh, yeah, I trust Stella, you. I was going to say, angel. I feel like this is a good moment because it's nice and pop, peaceful and the crickets mm-hmm. are playing to remind our streaming audience that this is in fact a horror game. We even created a little bot command for it and we're getting somewhat close to some elements that could be very considered. close. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm trying not to like say like, look away now, teens. But at the same time, um, if you're squeamish or if things that are horrific kind of get to you. I would say, what do you guys think? Like, maybe the next 10, 15 minutes, you might want to keep, you know what I mean, aware. Next, uh, three minutes. Three probably. minutes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. First thing, yeah. You guys know it better than I do. All right. <laughs> You've been warned, chat. Yes, look out. All right. Oh, that's me. Uh, this looks like a good shot. Mind holding the camera? She can't see the camera and takes position. Ahem. As night falls, my new assistant, the gorgeous Barthi Mew Hortensia, and I find ourselves on a high hill in the Blue Ridge Mountains, where we'll begin our hunt for the elusive, yet pungent, skunk ape. Though mostly encountered in Florida, this possible relative of Bigfoot has been spotted all along the southeastern edge of the United States, including right in this very county. Here's hoping we get a glimpse tonight. We'll check back once we're on the trail. Until then, stay searching, Stellars. I can take the camera off your hands for now. We'll be able to start the tracking scenes once the sun sets all the way. In the meantime, we get to take in all this beautiful scenery. It's gorgeous out here, don't you think? Oh, uh, is it the civilization one that's really funny? Yeah, sure. Being this far from civilization stresses me out. I'm used to being surrounded by endless distractions from the crushing weight of the universe, other people, exciting food, Towering skyscrapers standing as monuments to man's importance. Out here, I'm reminded of just how fragile my place in the cosmos is. Just how unimportant I am. This whole forest is but a speck in the universe, and I a tiny moat upon its surface. I am nothing, and if I fall to my death here, I would merely be falling back into the nothingness. A fitting end to something as insignificant as a single human life. Also, there are too many bugs. Stella reaches out and pats you on the shoulder. We'll get you some more bug repellent when we stop for a rest. I like that line. Funny. Your quiet moment with Stella is broken by a loud, percussive snort. Death has come for me at last. <laughs> Goodbye, cruel world. We're on a theme here. Yeah. No need to come to terms with your own mortality just yet. That's just the sound deer make when they want to warn the rest of their herd about big, scary predators like us. Let's check it out. As you and Stella hear the footfall of animals retreating into the woods, she reaches for her flashlight. A single deer remains behind, staring down the light of Stella's uh, flashlight, while Gretchen whines and pulls at her harness. And then it's gone. Jeez, Gretchen, calm down. You're going to hurt yourself. She cannot handle beer. When she gets like this, I usually have to pick her up and hold her. She has a bad habit of slipping her harness when she wants to go after something. You're too much of a potato, and they don't make harnesses to fit potatoes, do they? (laughs) All right. (laughs) Well, just got my heart right up. There's something wrong with that deer. Do you see its face? Now that you mention it, there was something a little off. Just a little. I bet it was an abscess, maybe a tumor. It's not like wild animals can get those taken care of, so if they just get bigger and bigger, poor thing. But there's not much we can do about it. Why do you bring Gretchen with you? Why do you bring Gretchen out here with you? She doesn't seem like the safest choice in a hiking companion. I actually find her to be quite the opposite. Sure, she wants to chase stuff, but I usually let her when I'm not on one of my cryptid hunts, so I can't hold that against her. I'm just happy she's still so feisty, even at her age. Pugs aren't exactly known for their good health, but here she is, running around in the woods at 17. And I feel like the fresh mountain air and exercise have helped a lot in that regard. You defy the laws of nature, don't you, Gretch? Never too late to turn back. I don't actually think I'm really cut out for this sort of thing. Those deer genuinely spooked me. I don't know if you want me weighing you down. 
don't be so hard on yourself. You just aren't accustomed to the sounds of the forest yet. When you go out on your first few night hikes, everything sounds like some horrible monster that's just waiting for an opportunity to shred you to bits, but eventually you realize it's mostly deer and raccoons, which probably won't go after you. Here, let's take a quick snack break before we get into the night's activities. Maybe some food will help settle your nerves. Snacks, snacks, snacks. <laughs> oh boy. I get really into describing food. Trail mix. In things. Got the trail mix. Trail mix. Good choice. Classic choice. It never fails to satisfy. I like to mix my own and make sure it has the best stuff. And I use dried cherries instead of raisins. Maybe it's a bit of a controversial pick, but even as someone who's passionate about dried fruit, I simply cannot abide raisins. I go way too in on the food in this game. <laughs> or do I go just enough? <laughs> Chat, you decide. Reflect uh, one for too much and two for just enough. <laughs> Yeah, I can't say I have a horse in this race. It's all good, bad, or food. <laughs> food, yeah. I can't say I have a horse in this race. It's all food. It will nourish my body in the coming hours. That's fair. I suppose food is food, but dried cherries are the best, and that's just a fact. This is true. Dried cherries are the best. It is a fact. You and Stella settle down on an overlook, snacks in hand, as the quiet sounds of evening wildlife wash over you. Gretchen gnaws a stick, distracted for the time being. So, tell me what it's like in Boston, baby. Do you have a house? An apartment? <laughs> Do you live with family, roommates, pets? Tell me what it's like to be Barthenio Hortensia. <laughs> okay, okay. I've lived in most of these. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's not see. the shed or not the internet cafe. Yeah, how about the doorless basement that floods? Yeah, sure. I live in a doorless basement that floods whenever it rains. This is actually kind of a second character building menu. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Is this going to come five... back at some yeah. point? Wow. Uh, we're hopeful, well, like, you're not going to go to your Little house, bit here and there. It's something yeah. the characters will remember about you in the same way that sometimes they say the city you're from. Right. Like, That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. I also have five roommates, and they tend to come downstairs and do laundry in my room because the washer and dryer down there. I lived here is my first house for two years after graduating college. I like it. It's a mixed bag. <laughs> it's a bit of a mixed bag, but it could be worse. Finding a place with in unit laundry is a big deal in Boston, baby. They're not and wrong. Which <laughs> weren't quite so in unit, for me at least. <laughs> It'd also be nice if it didn't flood so much. Half the room is unusable because it's three inches deep in water every couple weeks. Uh, exaggeration, but basement did flood like four or five times. And you woke up there. with a wet mattress. Uh huh. And I don't remember the last time I've had a good night's sleep, or privacy for that matter. But it's cozy and it's home. It's a nice way to look at things, but I don't know if I could handle that. Are your roommates nice at least? They're kind of clicky. I don't know, they're nice, but they're kind of clicky. I feel like they're all friends already, and they don't really want to get to know me. Like, they have game nights, and they seem to have a lot of five-person board games, not a whole lot of six-person board games somehow. Or they'll make a communal dinner and forget to invite me. Maybe I just give off a weird vibe, I don't know. If you do, I haven't picked up on it. it. Sounds to me like they really aren't trying to get to know you, and that's too bad, man. It seems to me you've got a lot to offer. You're hot, for instance. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> have you tried looking for another place? Eh, this place has its issues, but it's cheap. Ha, fair enough. I can't imagine how expensive Boston Baby is. So, what do you do for a living? I'm a streamer. Okay. <laughs> right, I stream in three inches of water every couple of nights. <laughs> in my horrible <laughs> little basement while the laundry machine's yeah. on. I'm actually a streamer. A streamer who's never heard of YouTube. Now I've seen everything. What sort of streams do you do? Because if you'll remember, we canonically oh, don't know right. what YouTube. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, let's do that one. Do talk. talk to people? I mostly just talk to people. Sometimes it's about my life. Sometimes I spend a few hours giving folks advice. Oh, Bartimeu Hortensia. I'll have to check it out sometime this week. How do you like it? It used to be fun and relaxing, but now that it's a job, it's gotten way more stressful. I'm kind of struggling to keep a positive attitude, honestly. Believe me, I can relate. I still love what I do and wouldn't trade it for the world, but there's definitely a shift that happened once it stopped being just for fun and started to be something I had to do. I don't know if you're looking for advice, but something that's helped me is going all in on treating it like a job, setting real work hours, and taking at least one day off a week, that sort of thing. 
you'd think it'd hurt your productivity, but for me, it just meant a, a, a day a week I wasn't spent stress, spending stressing myself out. Sorry, about that. I wrote this from experience. <laughs> Sounds fake, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought too. But then I thought, I better try it out to prove it totally isn't that easy. And I've never looked back. Sure, it doesn't fix all your problems, but it makes them a little easier to deal with. Chris Breeze passes over here. Yeah. What about you? What's your living situation? Gretchen and I live in a little house just outside town. It's actually the house I grew up in, so it has a lot of pleasant memories attached to it. And I'm glad I could keep it in the family. My great-great-grandfather built that house, and he must have done a great job, because it's just as sturdy as it's ever been. He and I, probably? Yeah. Yeah. Keeping the house in the family? Is it just you there? Yeah, it's just me and Gretchen. My parents died a few years back. But it's okay. I've done my morning. Life goes on, and we still get to live in our beautiful family home, just me and Gretchen. Could be a lot worse. Hey! Hey, I guess we're both members of the Dead Moms Club. No! Oh, and we got the Mouseketeer <laughs> achievement. <Yeah. laughs> Alright, I have to. Okay, now that we've oh. broken the tension with the Dead Moms Club, um, yeah. I'll just re announce to everybody on stream you are literally listening to the creators of this game voice act this game for you and this is an opportunity for you to ask your questions i know i say it every couple minutes but it's so uh important we have them they're captive for the next hour or so ask them questions and i've got a question for you guys uh, mm -hmm. now of course that we're not in deep stella appreciation moment anymore <laughs> i mean we still are but i gotta know as as writers when you are like think this moment seems to me like a great big like deepening of your kind of relationship with Stella. It really does serve. We, we have warned the audience that there is some stuff that's horrific coming up. It's a nice calm before the storm moment. But when you set out to do this elaborate dialogue with Stella, do you have like, like from an outlining standpoint, did you just say like, you know, I can imagine this going one of two ways. Like you either just say like, must deepen, must start caring about Stella. You know what I mean? Like during this moment and then elaborating and writing the dialogue, or do you just kind of like let the dialogue free flow and sort of see what see what happens or it is a combination? Like where do you start when writing? Cause it's so, there's so much relationship building here. You know what I mean? That I, I have to think like they, that you, had to be like very purposeful and intentional about it but you you tell me you tell us <laughs> every now and then there's a scene that starts because i'm like ooh, it would be cool if this character you had this like thing you said to them or they said to you but that's pretty rare usually it's something more like in this scene you will deepen your relationship with stella and i will figure out what that looks like how to do moment. that gotcha yeah or yeah, like I, you encounter Duke in the woods. You talk to him. Right. You stay I, in the woods. I feel like a lot of it is you just put it on paper, and then there there have been some times where I've come in as an editor and been like, "Ooh, we should we should like twist this scene a bit and use it to hit these emotional beats that I think that that like seem to be missing." Or um, very helpful to have two people. Yeah, yeah. and it seems yeah. like Tony, you're the editor that's gonna. And I say this in the best of ways because I'm also a complicator, but you're going to complicate and deepen things oftentimes, you know what I mean? As opposed to simply like cutting things for, you know, oh, this should be shorter and tighter and, you know what I mean? Like to make it more kind of like... I get some of that too. I I'm do sure. Both. I mean, again, any good yeah. editor needs to balance the both, but I think that like... What, what is interesting about this game and why I felt like we had to have you guys here, thank you again so much for being here, was exactly. that it strikes a balance, I think, between like very like engaging and very like pithy kind of stuff that goes on at a clip. And then there are these moments that are, that are elaborated and elongated, but not protracted. Like to, in layman's terms, like they're not drawn out for the sake of drawing out. Like it feels intentional and feels purposeful, but it doesn't feel like a slump. Um, if that makes any I'm so sense. Glad. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's so I, I mean, I'm speaking for myself. I'm across. sure that there are people in the chat that agree with me. Um, but I just wonder, like, from a planning standpoint, how do you, like, how do you do both in one game? And it's interesting to see that that mixture is there. Well, good. 
I'm so glad it works. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this being our first game, too, I mean, it was just kind of a, we have literally no idea how this is going to feel when we play through it. Well, and so, I think it, in some ways, like, I mean, you guys were both gamers, I'm assuming, before you um, ventured out to do this on some level. But I got to think, like, given how mass markets and, you know, uh, like gaming, game development works in terms of what I've seen and what people talk about on Reddit or online, I feel like maybe some of this balance could be attributed to the fact that you are first time game designers and that you are coming at this without sort of like, and again, I'm not trying to make, you know, grandiose statements about gaming and because there's this whole do make grandiose statements about <laughs> I'm not, gaming I'm not, and our game. I can't. Um, I won't, no. But I think that, you know, again, so much is sacrificed for the sake of the almighty dollar and that just doesn't seem, like this seems a little, like this seems artful and intentional in a way that I think um, a lot of, you know, uh, that I think slips through the cracks of a lot of games that are edited for, um, you know, to maximize the shooty shooty bits, if that makes sure. it sense. Yeah. Yes. I, I definitely, think? um, I value story more than I value anything else. Yeah. And I value people experiencing Same. the story and understanding what we're trying to say. Yeah. Like, I think, I think this is a sentiment that is probably true of a lot of good art, not to use the word good art to describe something we've made. <laughs> um, you can do it. I authorize. Here's the author. Here's yeah, the button. Thank you. No okay. problem. But I feel, I feel like there's that moment of kind of looking at what's already out there and examining what itches it does and doesn't scratch and then kind of creating what you feel is missing. Yeah. And I think that there, there's quite a few things that we constantly find ourselves missing when we play more mainstream titles and a lot of games in general that we sort of set out to be, you know, what this game is about. I think a lot of that is a lack of emotional content in player interactions with other characters in games. Um, gonna harken back to some Bioware stuff. I love you know, middle years Bioware titles, love Dragon Age, love Mass Effect, but like every single conversation you have with your crew members is like very matter of fact, I'm entering problem solving mode. And if there is an emotional content, it is exclusively your party members giving you emotions and never you really giving your party members emotions. Yeah. Um, so that was something we cared a lot about, and then also kind of looking at a lot of these kind of free-roaming RPGs or, like, long AAA titles. Uh, that frustration of, wow, I'm making so many decisions, and ultimately it feels like not a single one mattered. Mm -hmm. um, ooh, I think everyone here is familiar with the three-color endings in Mass Effect. <laughs> um, for better and how or frustrating that is. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, we made a conscious decision when we started to make this game to say, okay, we are scraping, we're, we're just getting rid of, like, any little extra piece of extraneous gameplay. There's not going to be any mini games. there's not going to be shooty segments, there's not going to be anything like that. And in terms of, like, what we are coding and the complexity we're working around, we are strictly working around adding emotional content to player interactions and making decisions that players make actually matter and kind of be called back into the picture going all in on script. And like, then suddenly while you're gaming, you're like, dead mom's club, eh? Like, to bring that <laughs> tension and just like, because again, yeah. there's humor in this too. Like my laughs are authentic, like I will say. And like, it, it, but it's something that again, like feels overall I think markedly more human, you know what I mean, than, than a lot of the, and again, not, not to knock Mass Effect, that's got, you know, I mean, it's yeah, a I, I, I don't, for a reason. Yeah, but, it's great. Yeah. It's, it's a beloved series. Yeah. Um, but also just like, you know, a question that we've gotten from a lot of people is, wow, how are you possibly going to like account for all the complexity that you're introducing with the story and all the different ways that like decisions are branching and it's just it's like the only thing we account do. for that because that's the only thing we're paying attention to. So yeah. like to give an example, uh, we're coming up on like a pretty big branch in the story soon. It will be very noticeable when you see it. Um, and there's going to be a second, maybe less noticeable branch a little bit after that but it's like based on those branches like a lot of the next episode is entirely different 
like the first 15 to 20 minutes uh completely different based on one decision you make yeah. at the tail end of this episode like a hundred percent different different yeah. locations different characters different dialogue yeah and that's something that like there's a you, character that yeah <laughs> I won't spoil it. I'm All like right. trying to eke out those yeah. spoilers from you guys, and I'm like I'm waiting, like sitting here, being like, "Ooh, I wonder." Um, Tori, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh yeah, and then just like you know, what one of the things, for instance, that we actually don't have to worry about in this context that, say, a AAA studio like Bioware would have to worry about is there's no voice acting in this game. Um, so for That's us, like the extra complexity is just our time as writers and my time as a game designer. Just and my time as an artist. Right, yeah. Just, just making a little more content, and it's not okay. Well, adding this branch here means that we have to pay our voice actors like another fifty thousand dollars. Yep. Um, yep. So just kind of keeping it to stuff that we can manage, and just making sure we can go all in on yep. it. All right. Do you want to keep going? Cool. Well, uh, Chris had a question from chat. Oh well, no, it wasn't. It wasn't even so much that. It was I was noting that Tomato Bisque uh, made a big funny when uh, they said, they talked about episode four becoming most praised for its cover-based shooting section. <laughs> like, <laughs> out of the blue, you have like a mini game that comes out of nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> Suddenly. Uh, yeah, I, I, yesterday I found myself like intensely resisting the urge to build out like a little like phone menu where you can text characters. Oh, I'm not doing wow. it. Now. We came up with a but, Yeah. It's just one of those things where it's like, oh no, like we're writing a part of the script where you text characters and you choose what you're texting and it's like, how do we account for when the phone comes up later and, you know, you've had your previous conversation. Uh, Tornado Bisc um, also says, I really hope it doesn't get like exponentially hard to write as the branches make more and more of those possibilities to account for. I think we're learning how to be smarter about it as we go on too. And a lot of um, them wind up kind of going back in yeah. and then you just reference like, oh, you subject to Stellas or something. Yeah, right. Like, it, it's often a little line here or there. We'll talk more about yeah. this once the, the branches, branches are evident. Branches. For yeah. sure, for sure. Thank All you, right. though, guys. That was great. Of course. We yeah. love answering questions. Mm -hmm. So you have just asked. Oh. Yeah, both. guess we're both members of the Dead Moms Club. Huh? Yeah, I guess we are. How are you holding up? See, Stella doesn't mind that question. She appreciates you. She appreciates jokes. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Ooh, this is a tough one. How do you feel about your mom's death? Man. I'd rather not talk about it. Dude, these are ouchy options. Yeah, those are ouchy options if you want to have click it. this one. <gasps> I've got to share the options that other people are. It's why, like, a lot of times when we play on, on like, streams, and like, let's be a chaos gremlin, because every, everyone's like, I, I would never be mean. I would never pick the rude or weird option. So we option. show them what happens if they do. Which is usually really funny. It's like some of those fun stuff to write. I don't feel much about it. It was a long time coming, so I've made my peace with it. I get that. But even so, I'm very sorry. We're both too young to have to deal with this shit. Whoa. Cell immediately packs her bag and slings it over her shoulder. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Yeah, no kidding. Whatever made that sound, I've never heard anything like it. And it's close. Here, hold Gretchen's leash for me and let's check this out. Y'all can hear audio, right? You've been listening. Oh, yeah. Time, so. Okay, good. You and Stella inch toward the tree line as she shines her flashlight into the woods. As you approach, a series of weak clucks call out from, from a nearby bush. Maybe Duke's, Duke's birds weren't eaten after all. What the hell was that? Hold on, I gotta play that back. Holy shit. I'm guessing it must be maybe two, three feet tall? It doesn't look hairy either, so I think we can rule out Skunk Ape. But whatever it is, it has one of Duke's chickens. Looks like it's headed north. Let's go after it. Do, do we have to? <laughs> nah, we're invested. Oh, God. Right behind you. <laughs> You follow Stella as she sprints into the unknown, Gretchen excitedly pulling you along by her leash. Can I get an F in chat for my girl Stella? <laughs> I know. We're both going to die out here. Ha! <laughs> it's okay, settle down. No one's being attacked. I just tripped on something weird. Lost my footing. Oh no, that poor thing. It must have been one of Duke's. Oh, Jesus, it's still alive. 
investigate the chicken. Investigate. You've got to investigate the chicken. Yeah. We move towards Seth, uh, Seth to get a closer look at the chicken. Don't let Gretchen get too close. She'll try to take a bite if you don't stop her. You hold Gretchen's leash close to your chest. She seems nervous, squirming slightly against your harness. Ed, four little chicken eyes look up at you, glazed over but still rolling around in their sockets with unfortunate life. Wing! Looks like this is what Stella slipped on. The wing is barely still attached, but that seems to be the least of this chicken's concerns. Gross. Good god. At first you thought it might have been a tumor, but this is something else. The skin is stretched taut, the growth pulsing beneath. Keen eye. Looking more closely at the growth, you think you can see something squirming inside. Having investigated to your heart's content, you turn away to give Stella room to film. Ahem. Seems we found one of Duke's chickens, folks, and she's not looking good. I'm hesitant to speculate, but she definitely seems to have some sort of growth under her skin. Could be a tumor, could be something else. Either way, I don't think there's much that could be done for her at this point. Jeez, I'm gonna have to put up some massive content warnings for this video. <laughs> hey, do you hear that? What in Sam Hill are you two doing out here? Didn't I tell you to... Birdie? Oh, Berta, what's wrong, darling? Good God. Did y'all see what did this to her? It wasn't us, please, so shoot me. Wow, Barthemio Hortensia has become uh, progressively cowardly as, as shit has gotten real, as they say. It wasn't us, please don't shoot me. Don't shoot me? Oh, relax, I ain't gonna shoot you. We were on the trail when we found her like this. Whatever did this to her, I think we can hear it in the trees. I assume we all can hear that sound design, right? Oh, right yeah. Now. Makes me want to take off my headphones, and that's good. Uh, put that put that camera away, for God's sake, girl. I don't want to be in another of your videos. No one needs to see me like this. No one needs to see Birdie like this. You wouldn't put her online, would you? Not when she's like this, all swollen and hurting. Dude, did you hear me? I think they're coming closer. Come out, you sons of bitches. Dude, don't shoot them. We have no idea what'll happen. Hear that, Stella? That ain't the sound of something peace slack. Whatever these things are, they'll pay for what they did to my girl. Come on, you, whatever your name is. Grab that flashlight and li help me line up a good shot. The creatures in the tree line grow louder and more numerous, fresh and violently strained against her harness. Well, folks. Well, folks. This moment of truth. A big choice. We'll give Chad a moment to weigh in. Oh my god, Chad, you gotta weigh in here. What are we diving for? <laughs> Tornado Mist. What if bullets make them stronger? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thank you for the It Follows energy. We actually set the It Follows soundtrack for just like. This vibe, please. Legit, like. Uh, like, It Follows soundtrack is amazing. Movie, I don't know if you're a fan, but one of my favorite recent it. horror movies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like it a lot. absolutely. I really like that one. Oh. All right, so we got Sadie so on twice. Thank I'm you, gonna, Static. I'll, I'll die for Gretchen. You dive forward and scoop Gretchen into your arms just before she manages to wriggle out of her harness. God damn it. You hear a body hit the ground, and then quiet as the chaos fades and the sounds of nature creep back in. Uh, yeah. Gretchen? Bartholomew Hortensia? Duke? Are you alright? No. No, I'm not okay. But I'm not shot if that's what you're asking. Who? I'm okay. Gretchen whines and shakes in your arms. Gretchen, here, I'll take her. My poor little pup. Thanks for watching out for her. D Duke? Are you okay? Narrator, he was not okay. Oh my god. Oh my god. Duke, holy shit. What do we do now? What the hell are we supposed to do? I hate it here. So sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, everybody. Whoa! Okay. Moment. <laughs> okay. Well, forget this ever happened. We could just leave and pretend we didn't see this. No one has to know we ran into Duke out here. He can just disappear. I'm sure it happens all the time in woods like this. Are you serious? 
we have footage of exactly what happened here. Sure, it's a little dark and shaky, but you can kind of make out that that thing came out of the woods. We can take it to the police. Duke's family deserves closure. Other people deserve to know what's out here. They're, I don't trust. I don't the, trust cops. I don't trust the police. They always go for the easiest explanations, and in this case, that's me. Darren could I entertain our little story about cryptids and tumorous growths when there's a stranger from a big city visiting town who was there to see the murder but was suspiciously out of frame with the supposed creature attack. Sorry, Barthi New Hortensia, but we need to share this. I won't let you hang, though, I promise. Wait, did I? Who wrote that? I don't remember. We need more footage. Come on, let's go after them before we lose our chance. Are you sure this is a good idea? I can't. <laughs> nope, but we're already in this deep. What's the harm in digging a little deeper? Lead the way. Good to know. Lead the way. Sel looks for Lee. You notice a faint trail of blood leading into the woods. Duke's mm -hmm. shotgun blast must have tagged the creature in their cu uh, scuffle. Sel, look at those blood stains. I think we have a trail to follow. You're right. Duke must have tagged one of them before he. Let's go before the trail is cold. <laughs> Are you still a What's the mark? So you and Stella push through the woods. The unearthly sounds once again surround you. Ooh, babies. <laughs> Say nothing. Say nothing, continuing forward with grim determination. More babies. Is. There's a clearing up ahead. Stella stops in her tracks a few feet ahead of you. Holy shit, I think I'm gonna be sick. The shrieks pull back into steady whispers as you and Stella stumble upon the putrid bodies of dozens of dead and dying animals. A sinking realization pulls at your gut. This is your their nest, and you are surrounded. More of those swellings. All the animals here have them. Or had them. Just a little. Just a little. Ah, uh, yeah, didn't know there's a mountain lion there. Third beat of that joke. Yeah. <laughs> we should have grabbed that shotgun. We should have grabbed that shotgun. And gotten our fingerprints all over it? Come on, we've got enough footage. Let's get the hell away from this nest before things get up. Just as you follow Cell on a mad dash through the woods, so too do the unearthly hollers and whispers of the nest. In the highest branches uh, of trees and down on the forest floor, they're all around you, casually keeping pace if they're all out of the bridge. We're almost there. As you and Stella reach the main road, the cries of the creatures fade back into the sounds of nature. <sighs> sounds like they've stopped following us. I feel like we might want to pause and just give uh, give a. Oh yeah, sure. It, it's yeah. not it's not like horror time anymore. Moment to some of the people who might be sitting there, fingers in ears, eyes averted. I don't know. Thank you all so much for being here. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and just to, just to, as a reference for anybody new who's joined the stream, so we're the Boston Public Library Teen Services Twitch stream. Uh, we have gone through a pretty horrific sequence uh, here in Scar <laughs> Scarlet Hollow episode one. Um, I do want to ask a, a quick question. I know I know um, we're, we want to stay conscious of the time, but I also want to make sure that our Twitch chat knows that you can ask questions of these uh, wonderfully captive and very generous uh, authors. Um, any any game question or you know any art question question or anything like that goes. Um, so feel free to type that in the chat and we'll get it up to you. Um, one question that I had just before we move any further, uh, I, I called them the mechanical pencil eraser demons. I know that they may have a name in the, in the near future. Um, they are horrifying and I need to know who came up with them and how they like, it, it, whatever you can tell me without spoiling. Um, I, I would love to know like where they emerged from, like whose twisted imagination are they birthed from? Probably me. Yeah, visually, <laughs> yeah. definitely you. Visually, I think uh, what they wound up being was a mix of us yeah. from talking it over yeah. over however long it took to write this. Yes. The audio, uh, I came up with the idea for what they should sound like, which is very specific, and uh, I won't get too into 
exactly the reasoning behind it, but there was reasoning behind it. I was worried it would sound super cliche, but as it turns out, no, (laughs) it did not sound cliche. Uh, People are very unsettled. I actually, uh, I couldn't tell when we got the audio clips from the voice actors. We actually hired voice actors to do whispering for us, and those weird calls are somebody imitating a screech owl. I was just like, can you make it sound like a screech owl, but then scarier, like it's coming from a human mouth. And she was like, sure thing. It got it back to me. And I was like, I can't listen to this. And I can't tell if it's because I asked a woman to imitate a screech owl and get embarrassed about it, or if it's genuinely unsettling. I mean, I I didn't know until we put it out there. (laughs) Yeah. So that was how it was with the whispers, too, where I was just like, am I not able to listen to these tracks because I made somebody do this for me and I'm embarrassed about that? Or can I not listen because I don't like listening to it? <laughs> it's scary. But yeah, uh, and Phil, uh, our, our sound designer, Phil Mikulski, is the one who put it all together and made it just perfect and incredible. So he's amazing. He made all kinds of, like there's three or four different tracks of it that we had him put together of those horrible little guys in the woods. And the design itself, uh, that was just me sketching on paper. What would be scary if I saw it in the woods? That's how that came about. Do you feel like you drew on your experience as a horror like fan um, in terms of how knowing how to compose a scene? Because I don't know. I'm not familiar with your with your graphic novels to know whether you've ever dipped into the horror genre before. Um, oh, but I'm wondering, yes. like, you have. Okay, okay. So yeah. that's next on my list. First of all, um, I hope we have copies of it at the library. Uh, the Crossroads of Midnight. It came out two weeks ago. Okay, plug. You heard it here. Um, also, the last Halloween, which came out last year. Yeah, I, I definitely heard that when I was doing my research. I, I saw that one. Um, so you, this is not your first horror rodeo in terms of narrative structuring, which is cool um, because that's like it's a very like delicate like line. It's a it's a difficult genre, I think, to perfect because there's so much that you could do to break tension. So, bra bra vex, and we'll move on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Feel a buzz in your pocket. Six missed calls from Tabitha. Thirteen text messages. We've got, where are you? Where the hell did you go? <laughs> Dang, why did we give the player a smartphone instead of a flip phone? Yeah, it would have made it a lot easier for the next one. Okay, we're texting her. She needs to calm down. Yeah. Text Tabitha back and tell her to calm down. Your message sits unread. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, what? Oh, I think uh, I'm in trouble. Text is blown out my phone. That's a lot of texts and missed calls from you know who. Maybe Tabby's just worried about you, as well she should be. But uh, first things first, let's call the police. Tell pulls out her phone and dials. So these are actually the old Stella sprites. I didn't fix these ones because they looked okay. It's all right, you're good. Uh, I just wanted to point out the. Yeah, her. Hello, Earl. It's Stella Richmond. I'm up at the mountain on the Asgina Trail. Duke is dead, Earl. Shotgun. It happened right in front of us. There's there's something in the woods. You've got to hurry. Okay. Okay, yeah. Are they really gone? Yeah, I think we're okay. But hurry. Jesus, Earl. What's go- Who's going to tell Bo? I guess now we wait. It takes a little while, but eventually a patrol car arrives at the scene. Out of it walk two officers, Sheriff Hugby, a friendly older man, and Deputy Franklin, a serious man, wearing sunglasses, despite it being the middle of the night. See? Right there. A thing jumps out of the woods, then the shotgun goes off. What in Sam here? What is that? Some kind of Pillsbury Doughboy? Could have been a naked maniac. <laughs> As the video reveals the creature's nest, Franklin ever so slightly lowers his sunglasses. Or a whole bunch of naked maniacs. What the heck is that? Some sort of crop circle? They killed Duke. Uh huh. Now we're gonna have to confiscate this camera, Miss Richmond, if you don't mind. This is evidence. But I. Okay. Let me just turn it off to save the battery. You know how you notice Stella pop something out of the camera and slide it up her sleeve? Here you go, Deputy Franklin. We appreciate your compliance with the law. We'll get a team out in the morning to retrieve the body. But for now, Sheriff Hugby and I... Please, call me Earl. Earl and I escort you. Who are you exactly? That's Bartholomew Hortensia. They came into town today for the funeral. Bartholomew Hortensia? As in? <laughs> no, 
none of your business. None of your business. <laughs> Pardon, Pardon me. <laughs> Just surprised you showed up is all. <laughs> we'll escort you both back to town. There's a naked maniac on the loose. It's best you don't walk back on your own. It wasn't a... Never mind. Why aren't you going out there tonight? There's a dead body in the woods. Those things are out there. You could attack somebody else. Well, it ain't exactly like old Duke's going anywhere at this point. He'll still be out there in the morning. Good cops. We only have a skeleton crew at the moment. Monday nights are Deputy Derrickson's bowling nights. We'll be on alert for any more reports of naked maniacs, but retrieving Duke will have to wait. Now, if you'll kindly step into the vehicle, we can return you safely to your home. Do we have to ride back with you? We can just walk. Those creatures left. We'll be fine. I'm afraid I'm going to have to insist for your safety. She sighs. Should be a sad side. Okay, yeah. thank you. We have a sad side? No, I should make one. You can ride up front with me, little lady. That is, if your mama permits. <laughs> sure, Earl. You can hold Gresham on the way back to town. You two stay out of trouble. We'll have all this sorted out in the morning. Just get a good night's sleep. And you, whatever your name was. Fox Mulder. It has to be Fox Mulder. Fox yeah. Mulder. <laughs> sure. You're in town for the funeral? Good. Don't you go leave it before then. I imagine we'll need to ask you a few questions about everything you've seen tonight. So keep an eye on them for us. Make sure they don't get into any more trouble. Y'all have a good night now. Bye bye, Richie. And y'all have a lovely evening. If any butterboos give you trouble, you know how to get in touch. <laughs> I I have to say I appreciate the level of depth, the commitment of character, um, in this voice acting that on this day. You got it. Absolutely. Um, another quick quick question that I sort of had. Oh, it was fleeting. Oh, I remember feeling, and I know that we have some fans in our Twitch stream of the X Files, like some young teens who are like going back and watching OG episodes. But I realized sure. that like, like in terms of that mixture of like definite horror vibes with some light comedy kind of thrown in, that that Fox Mulder was the moment where I realized like this is like. This is, there's some there seems to be an homage to like early X Files, you know what I mean? Where they could throw in that shade, where like Dead Mom's Club, A Scully, and like you would still feel like you were in a show that was intense and horrifying. Anyway, I just needed to call that out um, nice. because I felt like Thank that was you. intentional. And th there's definitely, I guess y'all haven't met Kanika yet. But there's definitely a Mulder Scully vibe yes. between those two. Yeah. All right. I'm sorry. Premature applause for Kanika. Thank you. Yeah, Kitty was great. <laughs> I'm excited for people to get to know her. Yes. Holy shit, says Stella. I hope you don't mind me asking, but why on earth did you ask them if we could walk back? That's a fair question. I've just had some bad experiences with cars. I don't know how to drive them, and I don't like getting into them unless it's literally a question of life or death. Which I guess tonight was. Sorry if I reared you out. God, what a night. They seemed a little blasé. <laughs> She seemed a little blasé about a man's death. I can't believe they're waiting until the morning to even start looking for him. Who knows what those things are doing to his body right now. And what's worse is I think they implied that you're a suspect, even after we showed them all that footage. Even the nest. <laughs> I'm screwed. <laughs> I'm screwed. <laughs> they clearly don't believe us about what happened. And I doubt that footage will help clear anything up after all. Uh, um, uh, these may be... My last few days of freedom, I'd better use them well. Yeah. I told you we shouldn't trust the cops. I'm not going to lie. The deck's a little stacked against us right now. But it's okay. I'm not going to let anything bad happen to you. I was there. I filmed the whole thing. At the very least, it'll never hold up in court. And it won't get to that point either, because we're going to do a little investigating of our own. We've got to find out more about those things. If we can get clearer footage, or better yet, track one of them, there's no way they can blame you for what happened. The library doesn't open for a while, but I've read every book on cryptids they have and never came across anything like this. Huh, there is someone in town who might have some useful information. Her place isn't far. We should head over now before it gets any later. <laughs> sure, why not? Let's keep this nightmare Okay, going. sure, why not? Who cares? Let's keep this nightmare party going. <laughs> Y'all right? Seems like you might be losing it a little. All the more reason to visit my friend's mom. I always leave her place feeling lighter. 
Come on, she's just down this way. The general store. This must be where Stella's friend Kanika lives. I'm about to make a bad sound. I hope she's still awake. Out of the corner of your eye, you spot a shadowy figure staring at you from across. You didn't hear it approach. Stella, I think someone's watching us. She turns to look. Bathemu Hortensia! Jesus. Before you can respond, the door behind you swings open. A middle-aged woman stands in the entryway. Go home, Wayne. I can't help you tonight. You look back and the figure is already gone, disappeared into the shadows of the night. Oh, do you want to be her and I be Kanika and Stella? Yeah, sure. I'm sorry about that, Stella. Some people just can't be helped. What brings you out here so late? And who is this? Hi, Miss Forsyth. This is Barth and you, Hortensia. Is it okay if we come in? Of course, of course. You're in luck. I just put on butter for hibiscus tea. And for goodness sake, you can call me Sybil. You're an adult now, after all. Nice job on the changing dialogue. Where it changes from Miss Forsyth to Sybil after that. Oh. Yeah, it's cool. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome to my little nook. It's fine. It's nice to finally meet you, Barthine, you Hortensia. I'm so sorry to hear about your mother. Vivian was such a lovely soul, and she's been sorely missed in the hollow, and now poor girl Anne has gone as well. Do let me know if there's anything you need while you're in town. Offer boiled peanuts. You hold out your bag. And you I can't you believe it. The, the amount you get out of these peanuts. <laughs> after all, and it's only polite to offer something in return. Oh my, thank you for the kind offer, dear, but I'm afraid it's far too late for me to have it, uh, something so salty. Ah, uh, we don't need to talk about our mom, but let's ask who that was outside. This is a very sick man. You don't need to be worried about him. We need your help. Ah, uh, yes, I suppose pleasantries can wait for another time. What's got you here so late? You seem troubled. You know about weird stuff, right? Unexplainable stuff? Not so sure. I followed here. I know which oils to use for which aches. I know a little bit about classical spiritualism. Just what sort of unexplainable things are you talking about? Duke was killed tonight by something in the woods. Oh my lord, have you contacted the police? Yeah, and they didn't take it very seriously. They're not even looking for the body until tomorrow. Those things out there, I don't even know how to describe them. Can't say I know much about local wildlife. My daughter has always had a brighter gift for nature than I. This wasn't, this wasn't the local wildlife, Mrs. Forsyth. Here, I can show you. Stella pulls out the card she swipe from her camera and pops it into her phone. Stella, canonical Android user. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wasn't about to just let the police hold on to this. At least not before we had a chance to make a copy. Cops would be so mad. <laughs> Smooth. The cops wouldn't know what to do with that footage anyways. Imagine if they accidentally erased it. Exactly. I'll give it to them if they ask again, but for now, we can examine the footage for ourselves. Where was this? Up the mountains, to the northwest. Within the town limits? Yes. I see. Is there a way to make the video bigger and louder if you can? I'd need to plug the memory card into a computer. I could go back and get mine. No need. Kanika should still be awake. She can lend us hers. You better come with Stella. I'm sure she'll be more willing to help a friend than her nosy mother. Kanika, come on out. We could use a little help. What, Mom? Oh. Hey, Stella. And Gretchen, who's a good potato? And a stranger. A cute stranger. <laughs> Did you, Did you just call me cute? <laughs> uh, no, you must have misheard me. You must be Tabitha's cousin. Tweety, we were wondering if we could borrow your laptop. Stella and her friend have a video to show us. It's really important, Kanika. Okay. My room's a mess. I'll just bring it out there. Heads up, Kanika. This is graphic. Duke got killed out in the woods tonight. It's on the recording. 
Wait, are you serious? Duke's dead? We can watch this without you. You know I have a harder stomach than any of our friends. I'm pressing play. Silence washes over the room as the video plays. Stella, what the hell is this? I'm sorry either of you had to see this, but Barthi and you, Hortensia, and I have no idea how to make heads or tails of it. Stella, are you okay? Did you get hurt? Sorry that th these voices are almost the That's same. Fine. I'm fine, really. I'm okay. Well, I'm not fine. <laughs> the other three look at you, unsure of what to say. Poor Duke. Poor Bo. Has anyone told him yet? Oh, that's me. <laughs> uh, we talked to the police. I hope they told Bo, but Earl and Deputy Franklin didn't seem to be in much of a hurry to do anything. I'll call him later tonight. But for now, we have something far more serious to discuss. Do it, do it, do it. Oh, I didn't no. like Duke anyways. Man, damn near threatened to blow our heads off. Barthi Mew Hortensia. <laughs> what is wrong with you? Whether or not you like the man is of no consequence. These things, my grandmother called them ditchmen. They are a terrible omen, a sign of great suffering and destruction to come. Everybody clock in the church. Mom, come on. Whatever's doing this is serious. Stop scaring Stella and Barthi and Hortensia with this Taylor Poe crap. A man just died. Have some respect. Kanika, sweetie, let your mother talk. The creatures themselves are harmless to people, despite that grisly scene of the How can you say that? Duke is dead! Unfortunate accident and nothing more. Just as birds flock before a storm, the Ditchlands congregate where tragedy is soon to fall. To see one is to be cursed by fate. To see so many in one place is... Sybil holds her silence. Jesus, Mom. They've clearly had a rough night. They don't need this. It's okay, Kanika. This is helpful. Stella, whatever those things are, they aren't magic. We can't rule that out. Not after what we saw. But fine. Let's focus on what we know. Whatever they are, they're doing something to those animals. You saw that nest. What were those growths? Oh, maybe they were here for Duke. Like some sort of self-fulfilling prophecy. I don't want it to be anything more. Unfortunately, no. Their presence forewarns of something far more sinister than death. Stop speculating about this occult nonsense. Let's focus on what we know. Right, what are those growths? I saw something squirming around in that chicken. Maybe it's some sort of parasitic larval stage, part of their life cycle. But I don't want to jump to any conclusions about something this out there, not without doing some research or talking to a biologist. I'm sure there's a rational explanation that will clear all of this up. Oh dear, I'd forgotten entirely about the tea. Let me fix you up a couple of cups. Uh, it'll help soothe your nerves. I don't know. It's getting late. I should let Barthemu Hortensia get some rest. <laughs> I ran them ragged today with all the hiking and running through the woods in terror. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God. Let this miserable night finally end. I'm tired as shit. I never wanted to go out there in the first place, and I certainly didn't sign up for watching someone die. I'm sorry. I had no idea how bad it would get out there. It's never like this, I swear. You're just hoping a good night's rest will make it all seem like a bad dream. Stella, I'll send you home with some of my house-made peppermint tea. A cup of day does wonders to soothe the soul. Barthi Mew Hortensia, it might do you well, too. <laughs> Bye, Stella. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? And call me if you need to talk. Thanks, Kanika. I'll see ya. Bye, Barthi Mew Hortensia. <laughs> We really commit to that six syllables of name every time, and I really appreciate <laughs> yeah. it. Also, I shout it. out, shout out to the Sailor Moon fans who I know we have in our Twitch audience because that was an unexpected like call to nostalgia for me, and I know for I'm sure you guys get comments on that all the time. We <laughs> do. I kind yeah, of was how hot is barking you. <laughs> oh, you know yeah, that, that was, was probably the reason Tabitha was like okay with us too because I give you like a bunch of like really nice points with people if you're hot by default. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I mean, it works, <laughs> right? It's like charisma yeah. in D&D. &D. It's just like... Right, yeah, it just exactly. It's charisma. It's just the, the, 
the structure of the bones in Bartholomew's <laughs> face. It just makes me want to be nice to them. <laughs> it's excellent ice to warm, though with the nights getting chillier, warm will probably be best. It helps wake up the bones. Be careful out there, both of you. Sybil turns and closes the door behind her. Alrighty, let's head back home. My home, I mean. And here we are. You're welcome to the st stay the night if you want. We should have yeah, we should probably head back before Tabitha has a connection. Ugh. Are you sure you're okay heading back up that mountain alone? Yeah, I'm more terrified of uh, making Tabitha mad than I am of those things in the woods. <laughs> yeah, Tabby can be really intimidating. Well, I won't stop you if you really want to go back. Here's my number. Call me when you get there, okay? And good luck. I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, I'm leaving oh, town no. as soon as I can. I am not sick <laughs> around for whatever horrible nonsense is about to go down here. You know, it's another week till the next bus, right? Then I'll get Tabitha to drive me somewhere. Right, well, I'll check in with you tomorrow. Stay safe. Sorry, Stella. Sorry we were so mean. I know. Like, we're literally. Scared. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, just we're scared. It makes sense, Were but still, gonna... everybody's <laughs> got to be, sense. like, in love with Stella. Am I right about that? Like, that's she's got to yeah, have they are. fan Thank response. Goodness. I had no idea. I thought maybe <laughs> people would think she was annoying. But... P.L. Steven says, why do I get amicable exes vibes <laughs> to, between Tabitha and Stella? I don't know if I would use the word amicable there. <laughs> <laughs> Continued on the path. Almost time. And this is uh, the the branch that changes the start of episode two the most because yeah. you either start the episode in the estate or you start the episode in Cellus. Oh! Try the door. As you reach for the knob, the door swings open. Where the hell have you been? It's supposed to, ooh, Wayne. Yeah. Oh, Wayne. Do you know anyone named named Wayne? I have no idea what you're talking about. I texted you back as soon as I had reception. Ah, uh, yes, when you told me to chill out. You need to work on your manners, Marthy New Hortensia. She ain't wrong. <laughs> used to go by Tabby, huh? Or wait, I I'll let you pick. Yeah, so you used to go by I Tabby, know. huh? <laughs> ah, so you've met Stella then. And she's gotten you all worked up. Ah, uh, that explains everything. I'm going to bed. I'll see you tomorrow. I need to leave this town as fast as possible. Don't let Stella's nonsense worm its way into your head. There's no bus until next Monday, and there's no way I'm driving on these mountains. You're stuck here until the next bus comes, so settle down. Good night. You're alone in the estate. The sound of the wind whistling through the house gives you an uneasy feeling in your gut. It's probably best to turn and try and leave the night behind you. Ugh. When you settle into your room, remember that Stella asked you to call her once you got back. Yeah, sure. Pull out your phone and call. Hey, how are you? She sounds a little different, like she's been crying. Did you make it back all right? I died, actually. Yeah, I love this. <laughs> I actually died on my way home. This is my ghost. Uh, you're very funny. Well, wait, are you serious? You have to tell me if this is a joke. It's been a weird night, okay? Ooh, I'm a ghost <laughs> in the machine. Okay, I'm gonna choose to believe you're joking. Now go get some Z's. If that's something ghosts do, I'll talk to you tomorrow. I'm going to quickly interrupt just to echo yeah. something that uh, one of our mods, Laura, is saying. This guy, so we're rounding out the last little bits of our chat. I believe episode one is very close to being finished, um, but we'll only have access, well, you will have access to this episode for free to download on Steam. And forever. Your heart desires, forever even. Um, but you might only have access to Tony and Abby for the next 15 minutes to ask them your questions. So please throw them in the chat. We will ask it to them. I even have questions that I can ask them if you don't, but I guarantee your questions are better, richer, so throw them in there. Sorry, go ahead. The fun message of her being like, wait, unless you actually are dead. <laughs> unless you are dead, and this is my one chance to talk to someone from beyond the grave. Oh, you Ugh, can this is stressful. I'm just gonna go hang back. up. Yeah, if you go to... Uh, like, I oh, didn't realize no, that. Yep. Eventually the sun will rise and chase away the monsters and make them seem like nothing but bad dreams. Maybe tomorrow, if you're lucky, you'll wake up in the normal world. Have a boring week in the mountains with your sour-faced cousin.
It's a nice thought, but deep down, you can't help but worry that things will only get worse. And now we've got this beautifully animated uh, Love cinematic this. by yeah. our animator. Big shout out. She was just incredible. Chat asks, what do you think about um, Barthy Mew? Barthy Mew DLC when? <laughs> Oni bro, you're the best. <laughs> Wild to watch this without the sound. <laughs> yeah, big thank you to Lucia Redamales, who uh, I gave her backgrounds and then she 3D mapped them. <laughs> Unreal. <laughs> yeah. Lock the eyes. So good. Birds. How does she do that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think it's a testament that you guys are still into it. Lord knows how many times you've probably seen it, but it's so... A lot. It was like yeah. the last thing I watched before coming on stream, and I was just like, dang. Oh, we got the bell pepper achievement. <laughs> Spanish <laughs> episode one was hot. Yeah. <laughs> That's Each amazing. episode is going to have kind of like a, oh, you finish this episode with this trait, so you get like higher rankings as you go. Well, it's also so that's the lowest ranking. Oh no, <laughs> bell pepper is the lowest. Amazing. Yeah. I'm, I'm, you guys aren't going to be able to hear it, but I have to give you the full round of applause. Thank you guys so much. Oh, um, thank you. If it's okay, um, I'd love to ask a couple of additional questions yeah, and just Absolutely. allow our audience to percolate a little bit and see if they have any uh, last minute questions for you guys. Um, so obviously, I'm so glad you're able to finish. Oh my God, me too. I, I was like, at one point, and I hope I didn't come off as I was seeing it, but um, one of our mods uh, and I are texting throughout just to kind of keep things on the level because we can't communicate otherwise. And uh, I don't believe they had, had that played through the entire first episode yet. So I was like, I think we're good. Like, cause I had seen it so many times at this point. I was like, I think we're about 40% of the way through 75% of the way through, but we were, we were, our timing was perfect. And you guys were right on the money. Um, and thank you again for keeping things like, you know, in a space where we could slow down a little bit um, at times and ask some questions. Cause again, it's like, I think what you guys are doing, and again, I'm, I am speaking as kind of a super fan that I've kind of revealed myself to be, but I think what you guys are doing is very much in a, even though we've seen visual novels before, and I certainly will say I've seen my fair share of horror games, I think what you guys are doing is a pretty original cross section. Um, and so wow. I think you guys, I mean, I obviously, on behalf of the Boston Public Library or not, um, wish you guys a lot of luck and will certainly be tuning in for future episodes because I backed the Kickstarter and I'm getting them. So, um, but that being oh, yeah. said, um, I will say, um, you know, in terms of, cause I, I actually didn't know before just now, um, or just today that Abby, you were a horror fan and I will say I identify, um, okay. what are, and, and maybe Tony, are you as well or you are? Okay. Yeah, I mean, not not as much as Abby, but I mean, I, I still grew up on those movies. Awesome. Um, I guess oh, I'm wondering if there were any, cause like, I can't help as a huge horror gaming nerd, I can't help but notice that like, the letters of Scarlet Hollow are the same as the letters of another famous place <laughs> in horror gaming. And I wonder if there were any kind of like, Obviously, there's there seems to be homage and stuff like that, but are there any gaming inspirations that you kind of want to or have fed into Scarlet Hollow? Honestly, I, I, I feel like if there's one thing that inspired us, 
probably like Night in the Woods. Yeah, like sort Which, of the less horror-y, the but... way the story draws you in. Yeah, uh, and keeps you kind of guessing about what's going on. I think we wanted to emulate that, but also make it a little bit more like scary. Yeah, <laughs> I, feel like I love getting scared. Thematically, the um, games are about very similar things. Yeah, too. I also think the What Remains of Edith Finch mm-hmm. is really great. <gasps> yes. I love the the. I mean, not that our games are very similar at all, but the uh, Return of the Over Den I thought was just like. A gorgeous game, absolutely. Stuff like that. Like there are a lot of games that I kind of list as games I really enjoyed that make me that made me excited about trying to make my own. So that's kind of where that came from. Whereas most of my story inspiration and the way that we built it, the way we built it was mostly what kind of things do like what skills do we have? How can we make a game? Yeah. Uh, so we had to build it around the limited skill set that we had at the start and um limited skill set okay i'll just i'll I'll let that one (laughs) pass by (laughs) well i gotta say i mean that i mean it definitely this falls into categories i think you know when i think of like i don't know how buzzfeed would classify this like this is games as art you know what i mean there's such a prominent feature of the like and, and, and you know and certainly like the visuals are stunning but also the art that's involved in such a complex uh, dialogue tree that matters because I think certainly like having played I'm sure you guys have either heard of or played the Telltale games many of which are steeped mm-hmm. in horror um, mm-hmm. and those are great but oftentimes like one of the difficulties is feeling like those choices matter and it's really um, it's it's tantalizing to know um, and I'm sure that the pressure is on at this point to like deliver on that kind of promise of how are you going to make it but again finding that you mentioned earlier Tony that you were looking to find that balance where you could you know not make too much work you know what i mean in trying to develop everything and so it's good that you guys are being ambitious but also um like i don't want to say guard is the wrong word but like reasonable about like the task before you um i myself am very excited but you guys didn't need to hear that i'm wondering if there's any (laughs) other questions um from our audience because i can ask another one um oh i have a good one for the next one thanks steven you are as an official state sponsored expert on good media you are not working with a limited skill set i mean i will say so like when we had brought up so i think it was either i or bpl laura that had sort of noticed the kickstarter first and we brought it up in a meeting and BPL Steven was like, I know who that is. Oh my God. You know what I mean? Like, and it was just like, immediately it was very, it was very apparent that like we had to get you. But again, thank you for saying yes. Um, as we wait for any last uh, second questions, one thing that um, I definitely feel like um, you guys have taken, I mean, you've shared that you've taken an iterative approach even to the game that's been published in terms of trying to make it better and stronger. I wonder if the game's fans, like I, I think Onibro was joking earlier about like the Bartimew Hortensia, you know, making a, you know, making an appearance somewhere to sort of commemorate mm-hmm. this Let's Play. And a, a, I wonder if there are any like leaps like that if there's been any impact that the fans of the game um whether it's your kickstarter audience or people who've watched your streams have given you constructively that have actually led to changes and if you could share any stories about that or any kind of like yeah so like i watch a lot of streams of our game abby does not like watching streams of our game (laughs) but i find it like you know fascinating user data uh, oftentimes like uh might see you know a consistent moment where like somebody gets to a dialogue tree and then i see like multiple people say wow i wish i could say this here and that's generally something that will take it to mind like that option on the bus where you can threaten the 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 stranger was something we added recently because somebody like made an off-the-cuff comment about, oh, I wish I could, like, threaten this guy. I was like, oh, yeah, sure, that actually makes sense. Um, Being able to choose streamer as your profession was something that, after we, like, watched a bunch of streams, thought would just be cheeky to add in there. Yeah. Um, But then somebody played through. Uh, We did, we chose these options this time, but um, somebody played through and said, what's YouTuber? I don't know what YouTube is. And then also picked streamer. And then was like, wait, she doesn't comment on the fact that you're a streamer who doesn't know what YouTube is. So we <laughs> added that in. So like sometimes they'll find little holes that we didn't realize were there. Because I mean, it's like the ultimate set of play testers having streamers play through it. Yeah, that's so true. So we tend to see how people kind of react and be like, oh, shoot, this isn't working right. Maybe we need more explanation for this. 
Yeah, so. I think for the most part, we haven't made very dramatic changes. Yeah, based nothing on very fan dramatic. Input, so. uh, if there's something dramatic that changes, it's because we wanted to do it for some future episode or something. Yeah, and do you feel like, I mean, you're still in the position, even with the story arc kind of laid out in front of you, are you still in the position, like, if one of you guys has, like, this amazing epiphany idea that you can still make those modifications? Because um, certainly the episodic release, like, gives you quite a bit of time to formulate plans, but also to execute and to potentially alter those plans. I mean, if stuff requires retroactive changes, I think we have started to pass the point of no return yeah. of, no, this is too heavy, there's too many things that we need to tweak. Like, there was one, one thing where there was like an important detail that we'd forgotten to include hmm. that we caught later at Stella the car getting stuff? in the car. Yeah, like I thought, it was like a thing where I wasn't sure how it was going to land and it didn't land. Um, or it's like, it would seem like I had just tacked it on in the next episode, Stella doesn't like cars. That's very important. Mm. Um, and I, she gets it to a car, no matter what, to get out of the woods. It doesn't make sense for you to walk back after everything you saw if there's somebody else there who has a car. So I couldn't just be like a thing where Stella just balks. So I was like, well, Stella just gets over it. There was supposed to be a conversation that happens in the car that I drafted in the initial script that we had to scrap because it was too much work and it wouldn't be dead. Yeah, like, we didn't want to make new assets for inside And here's the car. like the three or four different versions of a car ride you could have. Yeah, where like Duke would check in with her or the cops would be like, I know you don't like cars. Anyway, I, but, I just uh, know as, as complex as it seems in my head, literally I imagine it's some kind of like Max Headroom stuff happening in your brains whenever a change yeah. occurs. Like it's like, but then this catalyzes this and then, you know what I mean? Like we'll have to walk yeah. like this. It's really, um, it's stunning the level. I, I'm, I almost was glad to note that that little like note about the conflict between YouTube and streamer is something that you found out after the fact because it makes you seem more human to have <laughs> like made an error in, in that kind of regard, but that's really cool. And actually uh, BPL Steven, who again is a, a huge fan and I don't think they'd mind me admitting that again, um, <laughs> had a great question, um, which I think it would be perfect for us to end on. And it's for each of you separately, unless you're united on this, but do you have a favorite cryptid? And if so, what is it? <laughs> I do. Um to tell i think i have a couple you can do two we've got a couple minutes left on stream so yeah uh so i really like honestly the jersey devil <laughs> like just because it's so old I really yeah joy z rap <laughs> kind of toadies from when you joy z <laughs> so yeah uh I, like just kind of hearing about this old ass myth and then of course i also really like mothman just thinking yeah straight. mothman's my pick I mean, that's that was where so much of the Ditchling inspiration came from. We like Mothman. <laughs> we well, we retroactively kind of assigned Mothman stuff to the. Sort of well, sorry, sorry. Inspiration not for their design, but their function as a cryptid. Yes, we leaned into that. Um, Stella has a Mothman shirt on. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 She's her shirt is going to be like a little tease at uh, each episode. Uh, oh really? Wait, best. spoilers. Yeah. Special uh, it's going to be a very loose kind of lining up with it. So if you look at the shirt and think, ah, the Mongolian death worms will show up in this one. <laughs> no. It will not be but something vaguely handed foreshadowing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, something vaguely related to it as a tangent mm -hmm. might show up. In some way. Okay. You probably don't know what way. Because right. there's only so many cryptids. Well, you fulfilled my every dream was to get like very Ridley spoilers at the very end to entice everybody who watches the stream to be rewarded with something very ab like abstract at the very end. So thank you guys again. And I just, again, can't thank you enough for agreeing to be on with us um, for the stream. And I'll, I'll sort of transition by reminding everybody that we're the Boston Public Library Teen Services Twitch stream, uh, Oni Bro, um, Tornado, um, other static was here earlier rainbow thank you guys so much for joining us and uh tony and abby we wish you nothing but the best of luck and we do hope that uh we can keep in touch in some capacity um sure. we certainly will uh keep playing your games or at least i will and i'm sure several other librarians will um and um yeah i mean if you guys want to want to plug yourselves on social media um or let us know where we right can find there you. on the screen it's all yeah. over the screen people uh, um Black Cabby Games on Twitter, Abby Howard on Twitter, Tony Howard Arias on Twitter. Yep. Abby H Abby dot H dot Howard on Instagram. 
Yes. Instagram is a strange land. And your Twitch schedule is Saturday mornings for Art with Abby? Yep. At 11.30 a.m. is when we start. So we might have to stop after a couple of weeks from now because I'm running out of stuff that isn't spoilers to work on. I mean, fair. All right. This All was right. wonderful. Thank you so much for yeah. having us. Thank you, guys. I'm going to transition to the outro and, outro and say goodbye to everybody. Um, and um, if you guys wouldn't mind staying on for just one minute to debrief, that would be awesome. Yeah. All right. Great. Thank you, guys, on stream. And we'll see you tomorrow, 3 p.m., for two hours of Jackbox. Awesome. Have a great oh, night, awesome. people. Have fun, everyone. But later. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.